Sean Hampson. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2017 VFL Grand Final. It's Port Melbourne and Richmond. And there's plenty in the house. Hampson and Lloyd stripped. Shannon Lang, an enormous final series. Sends Port forward with Jack Batchelor. Composure and defence to get things going for the Tigers. We've seen him do that time and time again throughout the final series. Just knows when to zone off his direct opponent and impact the contest. A thumping kick, Mercedes leaps and able to neutralise Steve Morris. And that's going to be a critical matchup. Bachelor, I know he's the defender, but he's going to Dylan Conway and he'll zone off. We know that. So Conway needs to be smart when he leads. Either get used or put yourself in a dangerous position. Do not allow Jake Bachelor to zone off. Steve Morris. Dad Kevin, 73 and 74 flags. With Richmond at the top level, Alice, Pinwall, familiar names in shot to get things going. We know it's going to be contested, and they're going to butt heads early. Corey Ellis, another one to have a huge final series for the Tigers. So many Richmond players at the top of their game at the moment, as is this man, O'Sullivan. Flips it wide, Pinwall met by Markov. Just carves his way forward. Two on two down the line. Playing in front, Beasley. Taken out of it by Lyle. Scott Clark for the inclusion for Harituku. Denied. It's Hunt to conquer. And Richmond slip in a gear. Lloyd receives from Hampson. Puts it into the path of Lennon. It's a two on one, but he takes it cleanly. Uses the support. This is Jaden Short who pushes it wide and finds Moore back onto the wing. Kel Moore had an outstanding September. But he turns it over. Kicks it straight to Luke Tynan. and back towards half forward, honours the lead of Jordan Lyle, who marks on his chest in front of Beasley. Two former Brisbane Lions. Lyle chips over the top. He's got a two-on-one in the pocket. Bachelor does well to wrap that football up and prevent Dylan Conway from releasing it. We'll Jordan, have a bounce. Even though Jordan Lyle is their number one go-to inside the 450 with 51 goals this year, he doesn't mind working up nice and high to get on the end of some of that link work out of the half-back line, which he did on that occasion, just a poor kick into the, the pocket. Pinwall off the hands of the ruck, gives it to Wolfenden, who's been influential in September. He attacks the goal face, bouncing ball, Garthwaite will get back. And the opening score of the grand final is a minor one to Port Melbourne. Mitch Wolfenden was part of... Port Melbourne's last grand final had 21 possessions against the Cats back in 2012. Reese Conker. Liz Frank injury wrecking his year so far. Bolts and a stretch. His elevation is so unique. Oh, he's 175 centimetres. What about that grab? From half back. Another man who knows how to leap in Stengel. Front spot from Tynan in the team of the year. Coughed up by Waddell. Mercedes has to retreat by hand. Richmond will be happy with this. They'll take some territory. And now can try and set up this forward half compression game that's worked so well for them at both levels. Yes, yeah, we see a great mark there from Bolton. That's marking it like a key position player. And you're right, R Richmond have a habit of getting repeat inside 50s when they can lock the ball inside their half of the ground. Waddell slaps to the front of the contest, but it's taken by Lloyd. Feeds it to Conker. Conker high ball inside 50. Griffiths will arrive late, crashes the pack, forces a spillage. That benefits more. He can give over the top to Bolton. Opening goal of the grand final goes to the Tigers. Shea Bolton opens the scoring. And after three and a half minutes, he's already had an impact on this game. It's a perfect start for Richmond as we saw them start last night as well. But Bolton doing great things. First, that big mark on the half-back flank. And then crumbing, kick and goal. Well, ben, ben Griffiths hasn't been getting big numbers, but he's been doing this. That's what I said at the start of the game. He hasn't been kicking big bags of goal, but crashing the pack, bringing it to ground, knowing you have the small crummers at your feet. And Bolton, he started this game off in electric fashion, taking big marks at the half-back line. Big work rate to get forward and kick the first goal. 22nd goal of the season for Bolton, and he might scoot onto another one. Gathers from beyond the paint of 50. Vacant goal face, two and a minute to Bolton. Shea is lining up anyhow. Well, you can't give these small crumbing forwards for Richmond any room, time and space at all. They just hacked that forward out of the middle. 
good centre clearance win. And no wonder Damien Hardwick, Justin Lepic have got smiles on their faces because everything's going right for the Tigers at the moment. Brownie, the concern about this for Gary Ayres is Richmond's capacity to walk out of this stoppage and goal. Great uh, effort there as well in the middle by Hampson, but you cannot afford to give any Richmond player that much time and space. And Shea Bolton's got the leg speed. Have a look at Damien Hardwick and Justin Lepich. No wonder they're smiling. Jason Castagna and Dan Butler maybe just shifting nervously in their seats. A great start from Shea Bolton. You never change a winning formula. Pinwell cracks in for the Borough. Gets it to O'Sullivan. He's wrapped up by Lloyd through the hands of Ballard. Pinwell again hammers into Shea Bolton. The skipper looking to make a statement. Yeah. Ian O'Sullivan, the heart and soul of this midfield. That's a real statement tackle there from Toby Pinwell. He knows the first couple of goals have gone Richmond's way. And he needs to spark his team up here in the middle. Hampson tries to get it to Miles. Harvey Hooper in over the top. Miles tries to emerge as Pinwell again. Gets it to Lang. Lang quick hands to, to Dwyer. He can poke it wide. Now a chance for Port. This is Murdoch. He's got a penetrating left boot. Goes towards Conway. Important hand in there allows Garthway to tidy up at the back. Darley. And a slight fumble. He needs to play well today, Dylan Conway. There's no Habertuka, as was mentioned. He's had a really great year, but a quiet final series. Didn't kick any in their first finals loss to Box Hill. He's bobbed up and kicked a couple of goals the last few weeks. But they've been little cameos. They need a big performance, a four-quarter performance from Conway. Pinwell, shark the tap, needs to invert the torpedo. A second behind, but Toby Pinwell working hard at the clearances early. Five possessions already, all of them contested. Yeah, all grunt work as well. He's just doing everything he can here. He knows how important the first 10 minutes of a grand final is. Jaden Short taking a lot of the kick in. Hooper got a hand to it. Denied Ballard. Trying to keep it alive. Ellis. Bolton in again. Waddell. Meyercheck. Only as far as Lloyd. It gathers on the second attempt and is going to banana this one forward. Port defenders take the front spot. Good mark from Viojo Rainbow. In front of Steve Morris. Former Carlton player Dylan Viojo Rainbow. He hasn't missed a game for two years now. Short into the middle of the ground. Finds Lang. Lang to Murdoch. They look to switch to the city side of the ground. It's effective. This is Sandilands, one of their premiership veterans. Looks up, pumps it long inside 50. Lyle in good position. Bachelor with a well-timed fist over the top. He plays very much like Alex Rance. And you see Dylan Conway not getting used in that contest. Bachelor reads the play so well, comes across, spoils the ball and crunches the borough forward as well. Hampson against Lyle, through the hands of Lyle, tries to win it at ground level, taken by Ballard. Quick kick back towards the centre of the ground and going back with a flight to mark is Dylan Viojo Rainbow. He's got a man out wide, the kick not to the advantage of Wolferton, but he's got time to go back and fetch it. He'll pump it back inside the corridor to Hooper. Again, they look to switch to the city side. Cook looks for an option, has time to assess, goes long. Miles outnumbered. Now they're going to have to start locking their eyes. Picks it off. Going inside 50. If they just blaze away to the top of the square, Bachelor and Be Hampson will have a field date. Beasley to Markov. He goes towards Moore. Mercedes overruns it. Chance for Lennon coming through. Cook gets a piece of him. Hands. Sandilands in for support. Ball up. Strong play from Lucas Cook. Played his 100th match during the season, putting the stops on Ben Lennon. Second in the competition for goals. 44 22 in the VFL this year. Hampson, read by Dwyer. High ball. One of the few Port Premiership players. Markov, eyes never left the gaze of the Sharon. He'll try and steady things up for the Tigers. Two goals to Shea Bolton. Getting things started effectively here for the Tigers. Moore can slide in and take the mark. He's fought half of the ground and trying to get a scoring chain happening. Murdoch will try and find the body on Stengel. Ball to the back. Stengel slips. Guard. Griffiths along the ground. So Ben Griffiths not able to add a third for the Tigers. 7-5 from his nine VFL games this season. How dangerous are the Richmond small forwards? If it's not Bolton hurting you, it's Stengel with the second effort to get the ball out to Griffiths when the ball hit the ground then. Damien Mercedi with the kicking in duties. Goes long to the city side of the ground. Waddell sets himself. Over the top came Moore. Couldn't bring it down. Conway slick hands. Waddell releases Dwyer. A little bit of space to work in. Kick towards half forward, Lyle presents. 
80 metres from goal. Good hard running from Nahas. The kick from Lyle. Perfect. He's got it 52 from home. Told to go. Steps around Beasley. Runs to 50. Attacks the goal square. Allison from the side. Garthwaite stands tall. And Alicia Eva already seen the absence of Khan Harituku having an impact. Rebound mark inside uh, defensive 50, and that's where they're just lacking a little bit of height at the moment. Would have been handy to have him down there. Miles high ball. Ballard underneath it. Good fist from Harvey Hooper gets it to the line. They had the overlap run. They had Kane. They had Cracker inside the Ford 50. They just couldn't get the ball quickly enough to those guys. And when they finally did, Cracker up against Garthwaite and some of the tours for Richmond just couldn't bring the ball to ground. Hampson, Garthwaite, Miles all having a say early. Here is Miles ridden into the ground by Kane and lost his legs and Chris Kane was only ever going to infringe there. A bit unlucky there by Kane. It was a good tackle, but Miles just fell forward and he was in the back there, but at least it's a slow play. It's not a quick exit from the stoppage for Richmond. Averaging 31 possessions a game in the VFL this year, Chris Kane. Uh, Anthony Miles finds Markov, who will chip short and a bit slack on defence here from a transition perspective. The Borough, short, peels off a thumping kick. Chole, body work from Cook, brings it to the front. Good pressure from Waddell, it flips out to Manor. He makes a pork sandwich. Pinwell strips in Pearson. Wolfenden and now it's the Borough off to the races. This is the way they like to play their footy, streaming forward from half back. Templeton through traffic. O'Sullivan still something to navigate. Templeton on the burst now. Burns off his man Stengel. Handball over the top to Kane for the finish. What a goal! Oh, phenomenal. They're under pressure every step of the way. It just looked like one of those handballs, if it wasn't perfect, was going to get turned over. But they came straight through the middle of the ground. Executed beautifully. And Chris Kane kicks a big team lifting goal for the Borough. There are team lifting goals and then there are team lifting goals. So many players involved in this one, Brownie, and what a finish from Chris Kane. Oh, if you ever want to get the definition of slingshot attacking aggressive football through the corridor, that is it. So many of those handballs, if they weren't perfect, could have been turned over. What a goal for the Borough. Eighth goal in four VFL Grand Finals for Chris Kane. Gets the Borough started. Ballard sends it forward. Lennon caught at the back on Sanderlands. Mercedes gallops and gets around Troll and will go the one-two with Cook. He's usually the executioner by foot. He'll send this deep, too much on it. Markov's got hands to it. Cracker, clever from the 23rd man inboard. And now it's Port finding the tempo of the grand final. Anastasio lowered the eyes, but just had too much on the kick. Shot. And Batchelor outmarks his former teammate in Nahas. Sizzles one forward for Stengel. Well done, Ryan Check. Has a couple to beat, keeps it alive. Well done, Port. Lang retreats. O'Sullivan play slows around him and Lang it slews off the side of his boot. He's barely made a mistake in September. Shannon Lang would love that moment again. He did. He just needed to think his way through that a little bit better. He was under fierce pressure, so he could have taken the ball over the boundary line without giving away a deliberate. Instead, just tried to force something, make something out of nothing. Darley to Markov. The Borough have settled into the game, but Richmond lifting their intensity to meet them. Markov to Lloyd. 55 from goal. That's what he has in front of him. Plenty of space for the leading option, but it was beautifully read by Dylan Vio Joe Rainbow. He was just waiting on that kick. Yeah, he guarded dangerous space perfectly then. Pinwell, again, they look to run from half back. He's confronted by Bolton. Quick release to Nahas. Thinks about the give over the top to Tynan or Clark. Clark takes it, uses Kane. And he has the patience to retreat and retain possession to Cook. 24 handball receives to 12 at the moment. You get a very clear picture of how the Borough want to play off the half-back line. Now Sandilands to Masiti. They're looking to spread the ground wide, use the lateral space, and try to stretch that Richmond zone. Majacek confronted by Lloyd. Penn will take Stengel out. More quick hands. Alice's handball touched by Masiti. Ricochets to Majacek. Masiti now to Hooper, and a chance for the Borough. Hooper will have a bounce and looks for an option. It was touched off his boot, taken by Pearson. He's got Clark down the line. Will it get there? No, it won't. Jaden Short involved. Pearson will come again. It's picked off. Here's Cocker. And Port had Ashcracker alone inside 450. He still might get his opportunity. Lang marks. Lloyd in late. No 50. 
So Shannon Lang made his debut as a Casey Scorpion as a 23rd man when at Gippsland. Through Bendigo, now at Port Melbourne, and he's had a good final series. And this is what we love about Port Melbourne's audacity to stick to their game style. Yeah, they can change speeds, Brown. Yeah, they can change tempo. It was a frenetic first 10 or 12 minutes, and now the game just slotted into kick and catch mode a little bit. My check to Wolfenden in all sorts of space. Kick not the best inside 50 and rep best by Beasley. The kicking inside the 450 has been deplorable at the bar at the moment. The energy around the footy and getting it forward is good. But Beasley for Morris stands under it. Well done, Mercedes defending. Nahas will keep it alive. Hooper taken out of it by Ballard. You just cannot afford against a quality opposition to be slaughtering the football going forward as Richmond defenders will just continue to pick the ball off and then counter-attack the other way. So Port starting to get their slice of possession, 67 to 43. But kicking efficiency for the Borough, just 56% at the moment compared to 79 for Richmond. Clark gets the tap, Pinwell against Miles, and the two hard nuts go at it. Hunt tries to spin through a tackle. Lloyd tries to invent a handball. It's picked off by Dwyer. Clark's handball slapped away by Mark Holden behind the scenes. Guess what? Well, Toby Pimmel just refused to let Miles get up there. They were wrestling for about 15 seconds. So have a look at them at this stoppage here. I'm tipping both of them. Might be a little bit fatigued. <laughs> Toby Pimmel going to wear Anthony Miles like a glove. He's out there to raise hell this afternoon. Toby Pinwell for the borough. Marich. Here comes Pinwell. Clark couldn't quite take it cleanly. Marich does. Gives it to Lloyd. High kick towards half forward. Griffiths versus Cook. Spills to Mercedes. Griffiths did well at ground level, but eventually numbers went out for the borough. Mercedes invents a kick, finds Hooper. He's got Clark in support. He's got Nahas to the outside or can go more direct to Conway. Look to use the body on Garthwaite. The youngster played it well. He gets it to Lloyd, who bends it across his body, and Hampson just gets a hand on it as Nathan Templeton picks up a loose ball get. It's a couple of times now Conway's just tried to edge his direct opponent under the footy and it hasn't worked. So I just want to see him attack that ball at full pace, take a mark out in front, get his confidence up. Not an easy one out the back door. Knows about this stage. Dylan Conway kicked three goals in Williamstown's 2015 Premiership win. Free kick will go the way of Lockie Woodell as Robert Nahas desperately trying to get around the back. Of Woodell goes there now and he's beset upon. The forward pressure and it's Big Ben Griffiths. Oh, and this might reverse. Oh, great work right there from Ben Griffiths, the big man. He saw that handball receive happening in front of his eyes. He worked really hard. There's some feeling in this one, and Robert Nahas against his former side. Being let know all about it. Ballard now to give Richmond the opportunity to have some time in ball in hand. Sam Daly gallops away, the captain and VFL representative to the space, but no favours on that occasion for Connor Menadieu and Robbie Nahas shaking off the effects of a strong tackle and then some follow-up work here from the Tigers. <laughs> Surely that's a, a reversal, isn't it? Griffiths and Miles oh, right to the back of his neck. That's going to sting. It hurt. Robert, no doubt about that. Bit of aggression shown from both sides. Hampson over the back to Lloyd. Can't get past Lang. Hooper runs over the top of it. Lloyd goes again and Lang's there. Continues the harassment. Sandilin slaps it straight to Hampson. High ball, Bolton in from the side at ground level. Like a cat, a big cat, a tiger. He's run down by Viojo Rainbow. It spills to Markov. And he just can't quite get the angle right. It's still alive. Quick kick, Viojo Rainbow clears the zone. Lyle, one one with Conker. He goes to ground, Conker kicks his feet. Anastasio pinged for, uh, for kicking in danger. Maurice Conker bent down to pick the ball up. The speedy Anastasio came in, socketed up the line to gain territory. And, yeah, that's a great call by the umpire. There's no doubt that was in danger. You've got to protect the guy putting his head over the footy. So Maurice Conker goes towards the pocket. He's got a man in space. It's Hampson. And really good block there, just behind Hampson. By Marvia Scholl as well, just to engage Brody Majek, make sure he couldn't get across and spoil that ball. Poor checking by the Borough defenders. As you'll see in the background there, Scholl just works Majek out of it. They're the little one percenters that make your teammates better players that are important on big days like today. Majek appealing for a free kick for a block, but nothing doing. Hampson for Richmond's third. Slides it across the face. Oh, this is a cracking contest. Both of these sides trying to counter-attack when they get the ball in their hands. And 
The pressure's been fierce. So the Tigers' goal is since the four-minute mark when Shea Bolton kicked his second. And we're approaching eight goalless minutes in a pulsating grand final. Dangerous kick. Lennon tapped it down to Lloyd. This will be his tenth possession. Ballard off a step. It's Slews. It's Griffiths and Meyer check. And Hooper was pushed into the contest by Manager. In fact, Meyer check will take the free kick. Brody Meyer check for some en route to an AFL career. He was magnificent. Wide for Sandlands. Last week. Tries to create some run. Force it forward for Cracker. 23rd man for the Borough. Back in board to Sandlands. Murdoch. Thumps his left boot into the ball. Down the line. And Ryan Garthwaite, he's rotating through a whole set of port forwards at the moment, but he's barely lost a contest. He's a good defender, isn't he? He's 192 centimetres. He looks light on, like he can move him. But you can't. A lot of these forwards throughout the course of the year have tried. He must have a really strong core, and he's a wily defender. And that's in danger if so they paid the other one. And Anastasio claim, asks for it, doesn't get it. He's got a pretty good case. He'll be asking all day, Anthony. Viojo Rainbow back towards oh. half forward again. Bachelor, beautifully timed leap over the top of Clark. He just must engage him. Almost send a defensive forward to him. He's now taken three marks, all intercept marks. Darley's handball sets up. Conker immediately taken down by Pearson. Releases the kick. Awkward bounce for Clark. Bachelor arrives to force a contest. Clark dives after the football. Anastasio lays a tackle on Hampson and it spills to Bellard. He gives it off to Conker. Little give to Menadju, sold him into trouble. Back to Conker, steps around O'Sullivan. And Richmond successfully walked the tightrope. Taylor Hunt, over the top to Stengel. Takes on Waddell, drives it long towards Bolton in the pocket. That was a beautiful kick. There was, and again, maybe a show just protecting Bolton. Wants to go, is called to go now. Confronted, sells the dummy on Majacek. Lines up and delivers to Griffiths. Well, that's the way they've played all year. Exciting, but extremely unselfish. They've always looked in board for a player in a better position. And Shea Bolton, what a performance he's putting in. He's, he's slippery like an eel. No one can lay a hand on him at the moment. Ben Griffiths gets an opportunity to go back and kick Richmond's third. So Ben Griffiths turned 26 last Sunday. The Tigers lead by 12 points, 22 and a half gone in the opening term of the VFL Grand Final. Been a real arm wrestle in the last 10 minutes, neither side being able to kick a major. And that was again just a little bit of individual brilliance from Shea Bolton. Gutsy to stand in the pocket. He, he knew contact was coming, it never quite came because of Marbia Scholl. Well, you just got to keep him boundary side. He sold some candy to Brody Majek, who bought it hook, line and sinker. And undisciplined, a disciplined kick to the top of the square. Nasty candy if it's got hook, line and sinker in it. <laughs> Take it back. Shea Bolton, five possessions, two goals, and 100% efficiency. Tigers into attack again. Majek on the stretch. Out points, Morris. He stood up in really big moments in the preliminary final versus Williamstown last week. With big intercept marks like that. The CD cuts the kick into the corridor for Pinwall. They just want the ball in Damien Mercedes' hands as much as possible. Back-to-back -back team of the year player. Pinwell runs, takes some ground. Dwyer self into big trouble. Ellis threw it forward and it was picked off by the umpire. Port keep it in motion. Advantage and a big one at that. Kane to Templeton. Needs to run. Got a man at the back in Nahas who's going to dart back into his gaze. Tries to draw his Richmond opponent in Bachelor who is having none of it. I might go down there and give him a red rose at, at, at this stage. He is... Australia's most eligible bachelor at the minute. Jay-Z's he's playing a brilliant game. Long network. <laughs> Jake Batchelor is having a good game, despite that. Three possessions, three marks, and some big defensive plays early as he tries to become a premiership player. Miles O'Sullivan slides in, taken by Hunt, dragged it in, and pinned. So Tom O'Sullivan not having his usual influence so far. Three possessions, all handballs. But Taylor Hunt. Got a bit of a run with roll on Tommy O'Sullivan today, rightfully so, after the numbers he's been putting up. Good work, a little big shots promo into the conversation. That'd please the executives, Brownie. Jaden Short has it just back onto the wing. 
Spearing kick towards half forward. Griffiths, can he get there? He's caught behind Cook. It spills to the back of Morris. Slick hands to Stengel. Wolfenden tries to run him down. Ducks a tackle. Oh. Griffiths goes in hard on O'Sullivan, who's slow to get up. He bit off more than he could chew there, Tommy O'Sullivan. Templeton, Meyer check. Mercedes and now Sandilands. Wide towards Lyle on the wing. Beasley tracks it back. He's got a couple to beat. Lovely tap from Lyle. Great tackle from Beasley on Nahas. Forces the turnover. Mark off to Miles. Has to throw it on the boot quickly under pressure. And it's picked off by Pearson, who played on. And it will be 50. And Benny Griffiths just in the hands of the trainers here. So Tom O'Sullivan, it looked like he was the one that got winded. Big shot. And as a player, and you're smaller than one of the big guys, he'll be smiling. Well, Ben Griffiths has had various issues with concussion this season. In fact, the last two seasons. He, he, by the, looking at that vision, it didn't get him in the head. That's clearly just winded. Let's hope so. Sam Lloyd has it. Bachelor. Fashions a kick, but turns it over to Pinwell. He's got a man over the top, Conway in the pocket. Thinks about it. Beautiful smother again from Alice. The Tigers doing the little things well in the opening turn. Sells the dummy to Viojo Rainbow. Kick was ambitious to Lennon, but he reeled it in. Got it to Short. He's being tracked by Pearson, but shakes the chaser. There's a promo. Kick towards half forward. It's slapped away by Griffiths. Taken by Mercedes. He goes short and finds Viojo Rainbow on the bounce. Who has numbers. Lang. Wolfenden steps inside. Handball into space for O'Sullivan. Goes by hand over the top again to Lang, to Pinwell. Must hit a target this time, the skipper. Goes deeper afield with a vacant goal to go out. Needs the bounce. Huge. Gets the bounce. It was his only option because there were no forwards at all inside Ford 50 for the Borough. Really smart bit of play by Wolfenden as well. On the wing, he looked up. And there was no one but Tigers defenders down the line, so he brought the ball back inside. And that is a captain's goal. Alicia Reva, update on Ben Griffiths. Yeah, you would have seen that big knock with O'Sullivan just earlier. The doctors ran out to him on the ground, but he, he took, him, took him a while to get up, but he, he stayed out on the ground and was involved in the next play, so he looks A-OK. -okay. A massive captain's goal there from Toby Pimmel. It was his only option to go for home. Marriage the tap, taken by Lloyd. Bounces a kick towards Morris at half forward. Viojo Rainbow slapped it away, taken by Chol. He's immediately tackled by Templeton. Manor in there over the football. Chol scrapping hard at ground level. A oh, great contest. Shannon Lang in there as well for the Borough. Hasn't he stepped up in recent weeks? Been such a critical part of this Port midfield. He certainly has. 26 disposal, seven clearances last week in the preliminary final. Clark went early. Pinwell thunders into Miles again, and Miles will take a free kick. He earned that one. Wheels and goes. Griffiths working towards the pocket. He's got three to beat in the air. It spills to Taylor Hunt at ground level. Releases quickly under pressure from Templeton. Stengel tries to get away from Murdoch. Nothing doing. He is caught cold. And as we've seen Gary S do on numerous occasions, late in quarters, the full fort Jordan Lyle, he just plonks himself down back as that spare for the borough, just to make sure they don't concede another one before quarter time. And Stengel comes across. Another smother as Brody Murdoch pleads his case to say he ran over the mark. Should have been 50. I'd love Any to. Any knowing top. Umpire Dan Butcher it. disagrees. I'd love to have a number on just smothers and hand hands in when the borough look out. They've been enormous with their one percent as Richmond. Griffiths okay. Lloyd's been enormous in this opening quarter. To Alice finds his left boot. Can't steer it through. So Corey Ellis, his fifth possession. Sam, Sam Lloyd with 14 in the opening quarter. Had 48 in the game. Uh, he's the on track. Part of the season. Five clearances as well, Nudge. So he's on track for huge numbers. Jordan Lyle hunting for some footy in defence. To my check. Well, the port goal here just about brings them level. Dwyer almost running out of room. Kick needs to hug the line for Kane. He makes good of it and gets the kick away before Miles is on the scene. Pearson will try and slip Garthwaite. No one's been able to in his opening quarter. And Garthwaite again just plays it beautifully. He's got the goal of a veteran. Yeah, two really good contests there from both players. Garthwaite, he's hard man to get away from. He's, he's really quick too across the ground. 
for a big man. He's playing TAC Cup Grand Final this time last year. Now he stepped up to the VFL Grand Final. Lang's kick inside 50, slapped away by Conker. As Sullivan tries to keep it alive, can't do so. As we approach the 30-minute mark of the opening term. Boundary up, I was saying, touched here, so... It's going to come back for a throw-in and a chance for Port to set up and look for a late goal. Port built the wall across the forward 50. Marich the tap, plays it down for Markov. Alice confronted by Lang in the air. Slick hands from Hooper, but the siren beats Tom O'Sullivan. And at quarter time in the 2017 VFL Grand Final, it's the Tigers 3-3-21. Port Melbourne 2-2-14 as Shannon Lang gets to his feet. Richmond by seven points at the first change. And Plumridge, congratulations to them on qualifying for a grand final as we start the second term. It's the Tigers by seven points. Hampson the tap off the chest of Pinwell. Goes to ground. Earns a free kick. High contact against Stengel. Templeton. Quick ball inside 50. Conway. Clark gets it to ground. Spinning through was Waddell. Handball in the Conway direction. Under pressure from Conker. Soccer's off the ground. But Garthwaite's been outstanding. Back to Conker. Quick kick across the body. Body is punched away illegally by Brody Murdoch. Murdoch and the free kick will go to Anthony Miles. Well, the big question in the Port Melbourne box at the moment for Gary Ayres is, do he, does he continue to put time into Anthony Miles, who just had his fifth disposal? They've got him under control. Or do they move that attention to Lloyd? Sam Lloyd's had 14 disposals and he's getting off the chain. Let's head down to Nathan Temple. And Nathan, you're in the port huddle at quarter time. What was Gary Ez's message? A very clear message saying, take grass, meaning that if there's space in front of you, run into that space, take risk, link up with handball, and break down the Tigers' defence that way. We saw it work a few times. He encouraged them to keep being confident, take them on, and take grass. You see he's kicked deep but turned over. Ellis releases Ballard, who's going to thump a kick forward, but Port have got the jumpers there. Majacek has time to gather. Moore almost claimed him. Brody was too strong. Didn't kick to the advantage though of Lang and it's Jaden Short. Takes the mark and see Jacob Ballard just calling for a little bit of calm. Short trots away, heads deep. The tools are there. Eventually worked its way back to Griffiths. Moore couldn't find it on the first bite. Shares it now with Lennon. A couple of Tigers who need to get involved in the front half. Lennon kicks across the width of the square for Alice. Going to roll in on his left boot here, you'd imagine. Goes now, has to cut the kick into the pocket. Had Manna presenting, and Dwyer able to slide in and take that mark. One of a handful of Premiership players back in 2011. Masidi Danahas along the line, towing it as Cracker almost stepped out, kept the ball in. Kane, he's got a man over the top. He'll go there now by hand. It's Lyle. What can he do? Sets up another handball to the running Templeton. Lyle was dealt with. As he hand pass, advantage is allowed for Templeton. Ball seen over the line and out of bounds. He did the right thing, taking the advantage there, Eli Templeton. He knew he had some players streaming into space, but he was tucked up into the pocket on his left boot. It's always going to be a tough kick. Hampson against Conway. Beautifully done by Hampson down to Ellis. Griffith stands underneath it. Hook comes over the top with the fist. At ground level, it's there to be won. Lennon committed the body. Mercedi coming the other way, won the football. Waddell to Hooper. High ball towards forward 50. Back with courage, Tynan, but that's a well-judged mark taken by Corey Ellis. Holds it up at half-back. Waits for an option to present. Kick long to the wing. Griffiths against Sandilands. Works him underneath it. No free kick paid. As we head back down to Alicia, Alicia in Craig's huddle. Craig McRae's huddle, that is. The Richmond coach at quarter time. What were his main messages? Oh, well, it was all around territory and work at the contest. And something that was really interesting, when you go into quarter time huddles, you, you hear the generic terms thrown around. But one of the terms that they repeatedly kept using was um, around chase down tackles. We know Richmond are a very, very high pressure side and, and they pride themselves on those small things. So... Uh, we expect to see a few more. A lot of smothers and defensive work from the Tigers in that first term. As Waddell wraps up Ballard. Look at the hitouts there. 21 to 2 in favour of Hampson. He can make it 22 to 2. He wins another. Somehow Lang emerges from the congestion with the football. Tumbles it towards Clark at 50. 
Lyle turns, sprints towards the goal square. Kane sees him, goes for the open goal. Beasley tracks it back and will get there. Not quite on the same page there, the port forwards. And a minus score to the Borough. It's a six-point game. New Beasley gathers. We'll go the one-two with Jaden Short. So now some territory gained for the Tigers. Hampson backs back. Not paid. O'Sullivan. Hooper. Put the don't argue on Ellis, who just grabbed his arm and took him to the ground. Ellis done a few big defensive acts so far in this second quarter. This will be Corey Ellis' 10th possession. So behind only Sam Lloyd with 14. Damien Mercedes 13. Toby Pinwell 11 for the Borough. More. Griffiths, the fall of Sanderlands. Nahas navigates his way out of traffic. A bending kick that just couldn't get over the outstretched arm of Jaden Short, who will attack the corridor. He cued the kick. Markov there to set up. Port now needing to work on transition. Ballard drops what he perhaps should have taken. Around Wolfenden, back to Markov. Had Hunt on the outside, goes further afield. Over the head of Murdoch into the face of Lloyd. One-on-one -on -one with O'Sullivan, who goes low. In for a second dose. Wolfenden there, as is Murdoch. A clutch of Tigers grab him. Gang tackling from Menadju and Lloyd will stop the throw. It's a goal of difference, five and a half. Gone in the second term. Adel goes to ground. Ballard wins the football, gets it to Lloyd. He's wrapped up by Wolfenden, taken down, play on the call. Ballard to Hunt from 50. Goes short and finds Stengel. Should have been holding the football. Lloyd clearly took on the tackler. Incorrect disposal at the very least. The call goes Richmond's way and Stengel gets on the end of it and can extend the lead here for the Tigers. So Tyson Stengel. He's kicked 33 goals, 21 in his first season in the VFL. As we head down to Port Melbourne, skipper Toby Pinwell. Toby, thanks for your time. What have you made of the first quarter in six minutes? Well, look, it's been pretty hot um, up and back. A lot of turnovers from both teams, but I guess that's the pressure from um, you know, both sides putting on each other in a grand final. I feel like if we can uh, move the ball the way we want it, we've seen we can get it through, but conversely, we've got to make sure we don't let them get out the back. It's almost play on at all costs. Plenty of handball receives and linking up. Yeah, look, it is. We probably want to play with a little bit more composure than we have, but we certainly want to move the ball quickly um, and you know, ask some questions of their defence. What about the yap in the game, Toby? Is there much chat at the moment? Uh, yeah, there's a little bit, but nothing more than you'd expect uh, in a big game like this. I think all teams are blowing a little bit to say too much. <laughs> Mate, we appreciate your time. Let's get back into it. Thanks, guys. So it'll be a Richmond ball, a throw against Anthony Anastasio. Jaden Short starting to have an influence from the back here for the Tigers. Beasley off to short. We love the access we get here in the Peter Jackson VFL. Big thank you to Toby Pinnell and for that matter all the clubs that have allowed players and coaches to be a part of things in play across the course of the season. Bolton darts one way, then the other. Stengel and Chol outnumbered here. My check through his legs with a figure eight. It spits free. Ballard loves his situation. Can't get free. Strong tackle applied. The Ojo Rambos kick smothered and back into play. Port with some heavy lifting with Earl and Cook happy to get it across the line. Isn't it funny, sometimes in games, we've watched this, and Marbury Scholes had quite a big influence and impact playing as a forward, but he's the only player on the ground yet to have a disposal. So it's not all about possessions. Scholl in the ruck of the tap. Dwyer runs onto it, pumps a little handball to O'Sullivan, who's stripped by Moore. O'Sullivan goes back, lays the smother, spills to Menadju. Taylor Hunt's kick goes straight up in the air. Two port players go at it. Tynan, slick hands to Wolfenden. And the Borough can scuttle away. Templeton, corralled by Leonard, who did really well. Allowed the support to arrive. And Bolton takes Wolfenden over the line. Yeah, Mitch Wolfenden had to just concede there. He looked up and saw nobody down the line. If he kicked it long, all Richmond players, so it would have been a repeat inside 50, so he just took the tackle over the boundary line, they can structure up here now. Great defensive work from Ben Lennon and then Shea Bolton. Waddell at the back, gets it down, taken by O'Sullivan. High ball, Tigers with numbers underneath it. This is Hampson, he takes it on his chest. Really returned to form last week. Hampson goes corridor to Ellis. So a goalless eight and a half minutes to get things started in the second. 
Toby Pinnell's goal at the 26-minute mark of the first, our last major. Sam Lloyd. Cues the kick, wanted Alice, could only find Cracker. And again, Alice, the man dishing out the hurt. And that's not the area of the ground. If you're a Richmond player, you want to turn it over against this Borough side. They just slingshot the ball so quickly. They didn't on that occasion. Ash Cracker playing just his eighth VFL game today on the big stage of a grand final. Templeton will try and run away from Taylor Hunt. Two bounces in hot pursuit. Toes it for Cracker. Has Nahas inboard. Goes there now. Corralled by Markov and ran into trouble. Manufactures a kick. O'Sullivan, Cracker. They're lining up in board here, the Borough. Dwyer, called to go long. Thinks better of it. Short for Wolfenden. who goes short again for Templeton. And Port Melbourne's game style on show in that passage, Brownie. Much better ball use. They lowered their eyes. Hit up the little lead-up target rather than blazing away to the top of the square. I don't know who Richmond's tackling coach is this year, but I think he'll put his hand out for a pay rise. Because when they tackle, they just stick. Very rarely do you see a Richmond player not complete a tackle. He's an MMA expert, Brownie. That's why they stick their tackles. Well, Eli Templeton has run 120 metres for this shot on goal. Can tie it up at 21 apiece. It's game on at Eddie Hat. Eli Templeton, one guy for the borough that'll be loving the open expanses of Eddie Hat Stadium. Had a terrific year, VFL team of the year. Big numbers. Leads the club. For handball receives uncontested marks and inside 50s. Eli Templeton, he's had a huge year for the Borough Leeds. The club in handball receives uncontested marks and inside 50s, and that was a big goal. They didn't easy love it. So back on level pegging, 11 minutes gone in the second term of the VFL Grand Final. O'Sullivan off to Murdoch. Chip short to Anastasio, couldn't quite reel it in. Wolfenden, clever tap to O'Sullivan. He's hunted by Ellis. Spills to Morris, who takes on the tackle of Wolfenden. And Mitch takes him down. And incidentally, if you've got any friends outside of Victoria that are big Tiger fans or love the borough or love their VFL footy, Plus seven live app. Tell them to get on, put in 3,000 as your postcode, and you can watch it, live stream it right around the country. Get on board, spread the word. Nahas run down by Markov. Lang feeds to Pinwell. He can pop one over the top to Kane. Kane can go over the top to Conway. Port building. He's got Lang inside, but the handball missed the target and it breaks down. Lloyd to Ballard. And now the Tigers will look to run it back the other way. Darley kicks it long. Griffiths has got a couple to beat. Shot at the back, confronted by Sandilands. He wins the football, turns it over. Miles back to Sandilands. It's a hot football to be won. Dwyer taken to the line. Some good efforts there from Hugh Sandilands, attacking the ball and body really hard to win that footy. There's Sam Dwyer, Port Melbourne veteran, of course, spent time with Collingwood, was in the best in the 2012 grand final loss here to Geelong. Looking to erase those memories and Get himself a second premiership medallion. Marriage is tapped. Clark doing the right work and the follow-up through it. And it's advantage to mark off. No, it'll oh, come back. If you've caught advantage already, and then you throw it back, surely that's, uh, that's an interesting call there by the umpire. He could have taken that mark off. Menadieu slips it back to Sam Lloyd. Going into a little bit of tempo at the moment. It's been a high-paced first 10 minutes. Players a little bit fatigued. Setting himself Lennon. Mercedes got the body in early. Cook, Hunt. We'll see it to the line. Taylor Hunt, one of 19 AFL listed Tigers in this lineup today, of course. Former Geelong player. 105 AFL games. Just the two this season, round one and round 16. Marich in the ruck against Clark. Marich just takes it out of the ruck and feeds it to Morris. Play on the call. He gives it to Ballard. around that football were pleading with the umpires and one of the field umpires must have heard the touch. Big moment in this grand final. Hawk dodge a bullet. Sandilands to Anastasio. 
Hooper, he's run down by Bolton lurking. Sandlin's there in support. Lang's got to release quickly. Anastasio is going to be run down by Short. Morris confronted hard by Tynan the other way. Miles in over the top. What a scrap, centre wing. I didn't think the tempo could go up anymore, but it has here. Have a look at this. This is the replay. And Tynan was the man. Comes off the fingertips. So great call there by the field and goal umpire. So Marich in the ruck gets the tap. Down to Miles. He feeds back to Hunt. Two on two at half forward. Griffiths wrestling with Majacek. It spills off the hands of the contest for Nahas. And he's shunted over the line by Ballard. He's so good, Brody Majacek. One on one. Showing himself as an AFL capable defender here today, Brownie. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. 24 year old. Really big bodied, strong player. Can take a good intercept mark as well. Hampson the flick. Shark by Pinwall. Wolfenden. Tumbling kick forward. Lyle just volley balls at the cracker. Who is clean? And Porter off to the race again. And when this man's out the back, good things normally happen. Couldn't get a kick on it though. What pressure from Mark Hoff. Denies Anthony Anastasio an almost certain goal. And it seems like time and time again, he's like a tennis player, Anthony Anastasio. Turning to the umpires, looking for some consolation. No forthcoming. That is the kicking to grass that it was asked for a quarter time. The classic kick to grass. And Unfortunately for Anthony Anastasio, who's quick, he's not as quick as Oleg Markov. Just didn't sit for him. Clark gets the blocking free kick. And Lloyd drops back into the hole to take the grab in front of Chris Kane. Oh, what a sensational game. A goal down one end to Ballard that's overruled because it's touched. And then Anastasio looks like he's going to stroll in and kick his first. And a huge defensive work rate in action from Oleg Markov. Saves another one down the other end. And we remain all square. 16 minutes gone. Bachelor under pressure from Pearson. Goes long to Griffith, so again just crashes the pack. Scott Clark wears his knee right in the back. Ballard, little tap to Stengel. Umpire says a throw. You've got to respect Ben Griffith's attack on the footy. This is a man that's been concussed multiple times, spent plenty of time out of the game. He is fearless with his approach on the ball in the air. He hasn't lost anything from his knocks. Yojo Rainbow. Little chip kick to Nahas. Got a couple of runners over the top. Lang, look out. Here comes Morris. He swats him aside. Releases a handball. Wolfenden back to Lang. Good pressure from Griffiths. Affected the kick. Ball inside 50 taken by Beasley. He gives it to Markov. Tigers looking to run off half back. Short had to be quick under pressure from Majek. Got it to Lloyd. Lloyd to Beasley. Goes towards Chol. Big one-on-one -on -one contest here. Through the hands of Chol. Cook's got the boundary line as his friend. How exciting a football is this when both these sides just stream off the half-back line, linking up with handball. It's aggressive football, it's exciting football, and scores are still level. Just one goal in the quarter to Eli Templeton, that man Toby Pinwell kicked Port's second goal just before quarter time, and everything we hoped and prayed we'd get in this grand final between two evenly matched teams, crack it forward for Dylan Conway, who's yet to have much of a say. To centre half forward, it's a one on two against here for Pearson. He slaps it away from short, toes it forward, but lost the footing. Beasley can gather, spread it wide. Menadju will sit with the legs of Dwyer, trying to defy the birth certificate. Menadju back to Dali. And the Tigers VFL captain will try and steady things up. Leading rebound 50 players in the competition. To Troll, outpointed by Cook Mobile Troll, yet to have a possession. We talked about that tall defensive combination before the game of Majacek and Cook and Sandilands down back for Port Melbourne. It's been sensational all year. Holding firm. The defences of both sides, in fact, standing up under grand final pressure. Cook to a big pack of players. It'll spill towards Cracker. Kane will get there first. Gains a bit of territory inside 50. Past Markov and Nahas. Lyle tries to keep it moving. Beasley wins it for the Tigers. Gets it to Ellis. Arches the back. Slips past Waddell. Gives a handball over the top to the running Hampson. Hampson feeds one wide. Minaju spins through three tacklers. Brilliant play, Connor Minaju. And hits Charles Race out. Oh, great bit of football then. First from Ellis just to tuck the ball under his arm. Have a bounce through the middle and Menager as well. Looked like he was going to get tackled here. Not by one, All not sides. by two, by three. Nice blind turn and the delivery to Mabia Scholl for his first disposal of the game and a really important one here. If he can go back, kick this goal. 
We've spoken about his history before. Born in Sudan, went to Egypt as a refugee at the age of three. Moved to Australia, moved to Queensland at the age of eight. And from right on 50, he misses left. He's been a good swing man for Richmond's VFL side this year. They've used him predominantly down back. He can pinch it in the ruck and go forward and kick a goal. So that was Richmond's sixth mark inside 50. Port have just had the one so far. It says a lot about the game. Three goals apiece, but a pulsating contest nonetheless. The Ojo Rainbow gets all of that share, and, and my check takes the mark and can release runners here. Hooper left without it, has to go in again. Fumbled by Hampson. Miles took on Nahas. Harvey Hooper claims him. Wolfenden. Sanderlands Nahas, underground kick, Anastasio fresh off the bench. What can he create here? Right through 50. Memory of that grand final goal from that spot. It's Kane over his head. Hunt, Ballard, and the Tigers out of trouble. Pulsating football end to end, and away goes Markov. He's got the legs to burn away from O'Sullivan. It's a two on one at half forward. Mana will launch it long. Griffiths a couple to beat. Viocho Rainbow and important. Fists. And the Tigers double their lead. Well, this game is just hanging on a thread here. End-to-end -end football, down one end. It looked like Cracker was going to fly over Daly and take a mark. He found a way to get back, find the body and bring it to ground. And then Richmond were away. Masidi to O'Sullivan. Dangerous kick into the middle is picked off. He was looking for Waddell, but Jaden Shaw read it well. Oh, they'll be... Happy when the half-time siren sounds. Frenetic football. Into time on, second term. Short towards half-forward. Wolfenden tracks it back. And Viojo Rainbow runs it to the line. There's Shea Bolton. A couple of goals early in the game to set Richmond away. Since that time, Port Melbourne have fought back hard. The Borough right in this contest. As Waddell and Hampson go at it. Hooper. Immediately tackled and spills to O'Sullivan. Slick hands Waddell. He's pressured by Griffiths. Gets his kick away. Kane left it for Tynan. Now a chance for Port Hooper. Coming the other way. Bachelor committed but didn't impact the contest. So he went back and won the footy himself. Brilliant play, Jake Bachelor. Kane still has it. Port still a chance through Wolfenden. Who must hit a target here. He's got Lyle on the half volley. Beasley bears down on him. Lyle keeps it alive. Beasley wins the one on one. Can't quite find the line. Puts it back into play for Lyle, who cops one. Now it's Port's ball. Wolfenden forward, chopped off. Ellis, a kick without looking. It'll hug the line. Standing under it, Lang. Good fist from the back. Hampson, third man in the queue. A deft little body spot there from Wolfenden. Can release O'Sullivan. Pops it into space. Clark, push. A hold. Conquering fringes. And Scott Clark, the man who came in for Haratuku, can give Port the lead. A great little chip kick into the space there by O'Sullivan. Clark hardly had to move. And Conker giving away size. Just felt the need to grab onto the body. Clark gets a free kick. Played every game between round 11 and the qualifying final. Missed the last two finals. Back in. And missing right. A big opportunity goes begging for the Borough. Margin one point. And they, they're the opportunities that could cost you in the end. Misses from 30 out directly in front in tight, close games. They've been hard to come by, haven't they? Opportunities to score this afternoon. Ryan Garthwaite been impressive. Awkward but effective kicking style to the wing. Griffiths one-on-one -on -one with Majacek. Nahas buzzing around at ground level. Lloyd wins the football, runs into Pinwell, tries to fend him off. Pinwell pinches the football. Lang to Nahas. Again, the speedsters from Port. Pearson's got to be quick. He can go over the top. Templeton can gather. Will it sit for him? Conker suckers it off the deck. Richmond living dangerously. Dwyer to Cracker. Deep in the pocket. Corralled by Ellis. Brings it back inboard. Not 15 for Templeton. He throws it on his boot. Pearson stands underneath it as the pack arrives. Punched away by Garthwaite. Nassini has to release quickly. Nahas on the end of it, but it's touched. Play on the call, rubbed up. This game's got everything. The kick deep to the top of the square was about two centimetres away from being perfect. It just hits the ground, and that occasion, Richmond defenders 
get the smallest of fingernails to it and prevent maybe another goal to Nahas. Well, there's been a collection of moments here where the Tigers have been lucky to get off the hook. It doesn't get any closer than this. Phil, we'll look back on all these moments from the Markov push to make Anastasio miss, and then probably half a dozen since. Oh! Amazing acrobatics in the ruck from Lockie Woodell. Port inside 50 again. Clark with zero space. Hugh Beasley takes him to ground. If you're not sitting back on your couch with a big smile on your face, irrespective of who you're following today. Well, if there's such a thing as hit out of the year, yeah, that's it. Lockie Woodell takes the car. Lang, again with no space to work in. It's not usually a game that's been so low scoring is so exciting. Garriers comes down to the bench. Bachelor, Menadju slips Pearson and will send it deep with no one inside the front half of the ground for the Tigers. Murdoch scoots away from Moore, no mean feed that. Kick to space for O'Sullivan. Takes it on the bounce. Fashions a kick down the line, but hits the wrong side of the ball. Was looking for Templeton. As we tick over 25 minutes, Tom O'Sullivan, 18 possessions leads the game for the Borough. Langs had 16, Mercedes 15. Lloyd, 22 for the Tigers. Corey Ellis has had 13. He had 14 of those in the first term, so he's had another eight in this second quarter, Lloyd. Garthwaite to Miles. Two on one in favour of the Borough. And once again, they pick off the intercept mark. And this time, they've got a man in wide open space. Men everywhere forward. Cook to Dwyer. Just have to work their way through here. Penwell over the top to Cracker. Bachelor puts some pressure on, so he concedes ground to Nahas. Again, well played, Jake Batchelor forced them wide and shut that attacking foray down. Well, Conway, Dylan Conway almost gave up on that contest. And Garthwaite, who's worn him like a glove all day, just had eyes for the ball. Been outstanding, has Garthwaite. Batchelor flew high, it was well read by Lloyd. Penetrating handball releases more. Wants to step inside Cook, just slips away. Delivers inside 50 to a one-on-one. -on -one. Hooper versus Stengel at ground level. Hooper tries to get it towards the line. Stengel keeps working. Lennon was taken high. Ball still alive. Meyer check. Ball two. Umpire says. Throw it in. Well, the only difference in this game at the moment is Richmond are sticking their tackles when they get the opportunity. And the Borough, every now and then, aren't making those tackles count, letting players slide through them. 43 to 29 in favour of the Tigers. Darley got one last week pushing up from defence. Won't get one here in my check. Mark all free kick, it doesn't matter. Well, an absolutely sensational opening half for the 2007 VFL Grand Final. Remarkable to think it'd be three goals apiece at half time and be such a contest. Richmond 3 6 24, Port Melbourne 3 5 23. It's half time in the 2017 VFL Grand Final. Even Nathan Templeton, and here's Nigel Carmody. Tigers start a point up. Port have led for all of 68 seconds so far. Miles inside 50. Griffith sets himself. It's Sandilands with the fist. Morris and Pinwall collide. Jort flicks his way through my check. It slides off the side of his boot. Doesn't get the bounce he wants. But it's Manager out of thin air. Great forward pressure from Stephen Morris. We've seen him do that time and time again right throughout his career. Couldn't win the ball, but he impacted the contest. Quick little hack kick forward and the bounce of the footy. Could have just trickled through for a behind. It hit its point, came back, and Connor Menadju was the recipient of a big first goal. So Connor Menadju turned 21 last Tuesday. He gets on the end of this one. Little birthday present for him. That ball could have trickled through for a behind, but it hit its point, bounced back, and he was smart enough to be in the right place at the right time. Great start to the third term for the Tigers. They lead by seven points. Nice tap from Hanson down to Lloyd. He's wrapped up by Murdoch. Important tackle. And he's going to be the difference in this game, Sam Lloyd. They need to start putting more time into him. He's had 24 disposals, eight clearances. What a half of football he played as the city goes short to Templeton. Templeton laterally, on the bounce to Cook, who goes short to Nahas, needed to be tight, and was. Nahas trots away, Bolton tries to run him down, Nahas just gets boot to Borg. 
good pressure. Poor shepherding from the borough. Well, the two in the end, it got turned over. The two, the two key position forwards for the borough today have virtually been unsighted. Lyle being well held by Beasley, who took that mark in Conway. Only four disposals. Short to conquer. Goes towards the wing. Cork will arrive over the top. Take the mark. Hit the ground running. Gives it to Templeton. He runs to 60 metres. Spears towards Lyle. Sticks out the one hand and reels it in. I'll speak of the devil. If the Borough are to win this grand final, they need to get some goals out of Conway and Lyle. Jordan Lyle's pulled up lame after that contest, landed very heavily on his right side. He's up and about now, takes a couple of deep breaths, and sets himself. We'll get the journey, no problems at all. He's kicked 51 goals Frosty, this year. Frosty middle of middle for the most goals in the competition. Jordan Lyle, critical kick early in the third term, and he tucks it left. So margin back to a kick. Port Melbourne needing something out of their forwards in Lyle and Conway, who've been so good this year. Just the two marks inside 50. Oh, it was skittled out of the way and eventually worked its way to Batchelor to mark off Richmond to try and launch from the back. Fairly vacant in their front half, which creates the foot race. Stengel and Sandlands. Sandlands just ushered it to Damien Mercedi. Pinwall, Viojo Rainbow, Kane, Templeton, uncontested possession. This is the go for Port. We saw them kick a goal like this in the opening quarter, but Richmond stopped them in their tracks, and Miles earns a high one from Conway. Again, they had the overlap run there, just a little hand on that handball. Creates a turnover. They're the little moments Gary Ayres spoke about at half time as Miles goes wide, but Hooper gets there first. Comes back in board by hand to Mercedes. Mercedes looks for an option at 50, just too much on the kick for Lyle. Beautifully read by Bachelor. He delivers to Ellis at centre half back. They go up the middle, has got Lloyd in space. They need to start putting some time into Lloyd. Lennon runs away from Pinwell from 60 metres out. Open goal square at pitches and bounces, but. Misses right. If the Borough can start to make some right decisions with their ball use going forward, they have men everywhere. They just continually make the wrong decision, like that kick to Lyle, overcooked it, straight into the hands of Bachelor. Lucky Waddell. Trying to hold down the ruck duties in the absence of Khan Harituku this afternoon. Cue the kick for Lang and able to take the mark despite the best efforts. This is where Gary is likes him to change angles. But Richmond away to it. They're forcing him down the line. And Short Hampson set up down the line. The kick almost went to him. The end lands in front and Cracker. Try and generate some run. Waddell to Lang. Through centre wing and now out the back. Anastasio can gallop forward. Send it out the back for Kane. He caught the big hit too. And was really made to earn that terrific kick going forward inside 50. But it was the changing of the angles. Looked like he was going to have to take that kick long down the line. He just at the last minute changed the angles. Then they got their run and carry game happening. They look so dangerous. And that ability to go slow play into fast play, it's been seamless. Chris Kane, his 194th VFL game today. Kicked the goal in the opening quarter. 26 for the season. The goal last week, two in the semi final. He's had a big season, a big September after a quiet. 2016. Silences the doubters with ice in his veins. One point ball game. Well, he's a beautiful set shot at goal. We saw him kick two big set shots last week versus Williamstown. Very rarely with ball in hand. Such an advantage to have the ball in the hands of a veteran with experience and poise. And Chris Kane kicks the goal. Alicia, how did it happen? Well, boys, there's been a really big focus.
focus on handballing in between the arcs. They're aware that Richmond have thrown one behind the footy, so it means that the Borough actually have plus one in the middle of the ground. So they want to utilise that, they want to run and carry, and then deliver to the advantage of their forwards like we just saw then. So if there was a stat for handballs in between the arcs, I think they'd be off the charts at the moment. Overall handballs, 125 to 69 in favour of Port, almost double. Cook goes against Griffiths. At the deck, it's Marich. Feeds it to Alice, now Ballard. Off the side of his boot, sets Lennon a task. He will get there first. He's got Clark in pursuit, who arrives now. Anastasio comes to try and pinch it. It's a contest at ground level, won by Wolfenden. Nahas being tracked by Menadju, did really well. Alicia's absolutely spot on. It's those forwards, Nahas, Anastasia, they're playing high half four. They push all their numbers back. They win the footy, and then they just run and link up with overlap handball. That's why it's really important to change the angles, because if they just kick long down the line to the spare, it's going to be coming straight back. Off the hands of the contest, Pinwell got in hard and low, took out Taylor Hunt. Waddell over the top, looking for Anastasio. Garthwaite. Anastasio soccer's off the deck. Well done by the little man. Didn't want to keep that ball alive. It was 1v3 there out on the wing. All he needed to do then was play the percentages and get it over the boundary line for a throw in. Marriage and Waddell, centre wing, city side. Marriage tries to get it to Ballard. Pinwell harassing him, takes him down. Waddell tries to pitch it. Once Toby Pinwell gets you in his sights, he just is unrelenting. Waddell the tap, looking for O'Sullivan. Miles gets there first. Big release to Morris coming through hard. Ellis, Markov had to be quick by hand and was. Gives it off to Darling. The skipper goes inside 50. Tiny goes back with courage. Free kick Burrow for a push in the back. It's going to Scott Clark. Goes corridor, Tynan. And the team of the year this year, outstanding in defence as part of that resolute port back six. To Nahas. Some booze from the former Tiger supporters. Out the back again. Here go the Borough. And it's Anastasio again. Likes his chances. Runs to 50. Oh, he's got a Borough lead. They just keep seizing the moment when they know they can go. It's foot to the floor. He's starting. As this game's opening up, he's getting a little bit more space. Anthony Anastasio, he's starting to really take advantage of that. That was a terrific finish from outside 50. He's got confidence in his ability. It's days like today, they recruited Anthony Anastasio for. Doesn't get a lot of touches, just his eighth, but he's an impact player on the big stage. Absolutely. He did this for Williamstown a couple of years ago. Some really important moments. As this game opens up, his leg speed's going to be critical. Lloyd beat O'Sullivan to the football. Pinwell again comes flashing across the screen. O'Sullivan commits his body. Stengel and Bolton in on top of him, and the umpire says holding the football. Again, as I've said before, it's not the worst result. I know he's been given a free kick away, but it's a slow play there. He's very slow to get up. He's got Conker to Stengel. All the borough numbers have pushed back hard. Conker will go down the line looking for Chol. Clark will get there late. Clark, who started up forward in the absence of Ken Khan Harutuku, who's now found himself playing down back on Marbia show and doing a pretty good job down there. The Borough have got Lyle and Conway as their two deepest forwards with Pearson at their feet. But it's Hampson at the other end, taking it away from the stoppage, goes deep to the pocket. Clark back involved again. I think it's a really good move by Gary Ayres. Just that one extra tall up forward, they looked a bit top heavy. Now they're going with the leg speed that they know they've got. Griffiths against Sandilands. Dwyer. Hooper held when not in possession. It's going to go to Harvey Hooper, the youngster playing his 12th VFL game this afternoon. Very tough footballer. A 20 year old from Scotch College. They breed him tough there. So Dylan Viojo Rainbow, former 
Blue. Another great addition to the Ports lineup in 2017. Down the line, Hampson can set himself, and, and it's an easy, uncontested mark. And that is the exact kick that they don't want to do coming out of the back half. Hampson sends it deep once again. Moore, Majacek, Spillage, Morris to Griffiths. Menadju, Ballard run down by Anastasio. He's got a sniff right now. He's having a real impact now. That's just great defensive work rate from Anthony Anastasio. Warming his way into this game, and the kick to release Nahas is an absolute peach. Nahas a bounce, corralled by Hampson, will come in board. And Port again, able to flick gears to Woofenden. Has options in the corridor at the top of screen. Brings it back to the flank. Lyle flew at the back, Sandlins. Double grabs. Garthway claims him. Conway, short, can slip him. Send the kick deep as it hugs the line. Naha stays under it. Hampson again. Oh, Guts having a presence in the air. Gives it off to Cocker. Tigers looking to counter punch through Lloyd. Menadju. Penwell tries to run him down. Slips away. Delivers inside 50 to Chol. On the bounce. One on one with Clark. Wants to use his athleticism. Has got the speed. Tries to turn him inside out. Will come back inboard and find Manor. He's called to go. Tries to get around Kane. Can't quite. Now he does. Runs to 52. Goes to the top of the square. Stengel lurking at the front. Ball spills. Menadju. Touched off his boot, was it? No, it wasn't. It's a goal. Connor Menadju kicks his second. And the Tigers are back in front. And this game continues to ebb and flow. Menadju with Richmond's two goals in this third quarter. Manor with the audacity out on the half. Ford flank just to take the tackler on. Gain that extra bit of meterage. Needed to put it into a dangerous space. Bold bit of play there from Manor. And confidence just to take the man on the mark on. Gain that extra bit of meterage. Gets it to a dangerous spot. And Connor Menadju, they've only kicked two this quarter. And he's got them both. Five goals in three finals for Menadju. Our third lead change of the afternoon. Pinwall inside 50. Waddell perhaps being held. Beasley left it for Miles. Short off a step. Ball of bounce on its point. Mercedes gathers. Had Hooper. Taken to ground by Menadju. Another one who's really turning up the heat. They just had a sink there, those two boys. Two on one. Just needed to tap the ball. To Hooper or at least put a block on, do something. 12 possessions coming up now for Menadju at 91% in the direction of Chol. Can he get involved? Richmond set up forward of the ball, goes towards Moore. Excellent defence from Cook. Needs to follow up, does so. Just before Moore gets him to my chicken. If he handball at best, Anastasio has to beat Alice, toes it forward and gets it back. Well played. The former Seagull tries to kick to Sanderlands, who gathers, slips Garthwaite to the outside, and Kane. Kane goes down the line, but it's a two-on-one, and Conker will pick it off. Conker goes long from the wing. Lloyd waits at the back, read it beautifully off hands, had a fumble, spills to Moore, can't get away from Masidi. Releases a handball to Stengel, steps inside Dwyer, delivers to Marby or Chow. When he gets his tail up, he's a very hard man to stop. Marby Chol has had a big last couple of minutes. He's kicked 13 goals, 10 for the season. This is 38th VFL game this afternoon after joining the Richmond rookie list last season. Tasted AFL footy in round 23 last year. Hasn't been able to make inroads this year, but what a prospect. That's why he leads the club in contested marks this year. The chance to give the Tigers... A little buffer midway through the third term. Oh. Oh. He's missed a lot. It's actually harder to do that than kick a goal. And his reaction says it all. It was a steer rather than a kick. Clark, Conway, they all set themselves. So two goals apiece in this third quarter. Two to Conor Menadju for the Tigers bookending. Chris Kane second, and that goal from Anthony Anastasio. Damien Hartwick, amongst Richmond players and coaches watching on. 
Tigers to face Adelaide in their first AFL Grand Final next week for 35 years. Woofenden, Hooper, handball shoveled forward by Woofenden to Lang. Smart, sensible kick to Templeton. And now it's Port Melbourne who need a couple of minutes with the game on their own terms. Templeton to Murdoch. Really important to get the ball into the hands of Sammy and McShua. Good ball users. Tynan now called to go. Kick touch by Bolton. Cook, slip child, and just before Bolton was on the scene, turns it over by hand. Conker not going to get free of Scott Clark. And gone. So a let off for Port, and they can regain composure from half back. With the speed of Bolton telling once again, just forcing the quick release, quicker than the Port defenders expect it. And that's what they need composure. Some of the good players have composure with ball in hand. Some of the young guys under the fierce heat of grand final pressure just coughing it up. Murdoch tidy delivery to Kane. Likewise to Dwyer off the back edge of the square. Wants an option. Kane works his way through the traffic. Here go Port again. Handballs have got to be tight. Wolfenden to Conway, but he floated here. Zalos will get run down. Great tackle from Chris Kane. You can see what the Borough are trying to do. They're trying to run through the Richmond zone, run the Tigers off their feet. Kane just hoists that one high. Hampson will sit underneath it and pick that off all afternoon. It's the wrong option. Chris Kane had to look laterally and find an option, not just kick it high and long to where all the Richmond numbers were. Hampson to Jaden Short. We'll go towards Chole and Moore. Cook will arrive. Off the hands and out for a throw in. There's Lucas Cook and Marby or Chole. Chris Kane saw after that last tackle. It's been seen by the medico who's given him the all clear. It's Toby Pinwell and Shannon Lang wait to check back into the game. Hampson with body strength got rid of Waddell. Ball ricochets back to him. Dwyer confronts Miles in the air. Coming through Viojo Rainbow. Nahas needs to be quick. Twinkle toed his way through traffic. Got it to Mercedes. Goes with the left boot inside 50. Garthway tracks it back in the air. Couldn't take the mark. Spills to Sandilands. Who snaps and goals. The Borough are back in front. Hugh Sandilands is the player that's gone forward. Clark's gone back, and he's another one of those Borough players that's a pretty handy swing man. He hasn't played too much time up forward, but we know that he can. And that's goal number six for the year. Another Gary Ayres coaching master stroke here. Clark has gone down back which has thrown Hugh Sanderlands forward. We know that he can play forward. He hasn't done a lot of it this year, but he goes, snaps his sixth goal and the most important one of his career. Composed finish in his third grand final, Hugh Sanderlands, free kick of Arne Marich's out of the ruck contest in his final game as a Tiger. Happy to send it straight up the corridor. Murdoch presents, slaps it forward, Hunt at the fall to conquer at the back. Squeeze a kick right for Lennon. Can he have a moment? Just lets it over the line and out of bounds. He's been really quiet, Ben Lennon, coming into today with 44 goals, you mentioned. And he's just had the five disposals. Averaging 16 possessions and six marks and yet to have a mark, Brownie. So he's not getting the ball through the normal format he would. Player, though, that can have an impact quickly. Markov, Pinwell claims him with a perfectly executed tackle. He's like a human pinball, Toby Pinwell. Toby Pinwell, 19 possessions, six tackles, 12 contested possessions and a goal. Just bounces off everything. For the port skipper, who was the Norm Goss medalist in their 2011 triumph. Handball flip to the outside, Miles can dart away from Nahas. Send it forward, Stengel and Tynan. Well done, Luke Tynan. What a season he's had. And again, Paul look to run off half back and stream forward. This time it's Lang over the top of the defence. Beautifully weighted kick to Kane. He gives it off to Cracker. He's got speed as well. Darley tries to work him to the line. He goes towards the pocket, sliding in with Sandilands. And that additional mobility of Hugh Sandilands just giving that forward line an extra dimension. And how quickly did they move the ball from Tynan at full back? 
all the way up the ground. It was inside 50 in the space of three or four seconds. Hugh Sanderland worked really hard into the pocket to get to it. The kick from Cracker just falling short. Some momentum with Port right now. Marich gets it down. Lloyd again tackled by Pinwell. Toby Pinwell now, that's tackle number seven. He's had 20 disposals, eight clearances. Let's head boundary side, Sam Dwyer joins us on the headset. Sam, this game delicately poised. We'll come back to Sam in a moment. Big flight from Moore. Clark. And Woodell takes it to the line, which is where we find Sam Dwyer. Sam, thanks for your time. This game delicately poised. Yes, yeah, it certainly is. It's really been a seesaw and affair. Hopefully we can, uh, we just need to get a, a couple in a row and uh, hopefully we can break them. Gary has spoke at halftime about the importance of small moments. You guys obviously trying to set up to run through off halfback. You look dangerous when you can get that going. Yeah, that's right. We've, uh, we've been working on that all year and we, we think it's a strength. <coughs> hopefully we can uh, just keep running and hopefully we'll break them. Sam, we appreciate your time. We'll let you get back into the action. No issues. Sam Dwyer joining us on 7 VFL. Wolfenden tracks the handball from Majacek. Feeds it back to Clark. Has to be quick. Across his body, it's picked off by Ballard. Approaching the 23-minute mark of the third term. Ballard inside 50. Markov had to stand and wait at ground level. Danger again. Here come the power. Lang. Anastasio. He's got Lyle over the top. He can hold it. Or he can give it to Templeton. Does the ladder. Puts it behind him. Anastasio steps around Bellard. Richmond defenders arrive. Lyle, they're scrapping desperately. Well played, Tigers. Bellard, quick hands. And the Tigers dodge a bullet. Lyle dodged a huge bullet there. And might go the other way with interest. Manor marks. Crowd, raucous. Manor sends it deep. Here is Lennon's moment. Or Bolton to ground level. Lennon keeps it alive to Morris. Corralled by Massini, kick off the line, Menadju on the stretch. With a man down for the Tigers, I think it's Shea Bolton from the marking contest. Meanwhile, Connor Menadju to kick for his third of the quarter and Shea Bolton hobbling now to his feet. Oh, how important was that moment for the bar at centre half forward. Jordan Lyle takes the mark. You don't blame him for trying to play on. That's been their go all day today and that's how they're going to win this game. But Templeton just ran into a bit of trouble. They fought, they turned the ball over. And Connor Menager has a chance to kick his third. Had just 12 VFL goals coming into the day. Won't make it three and a quarter. Margin of four points and Shea Bolton. Richmond need him in his fully fledged capacities quickly. Could have been a two goal swing. A massive 60 seconds in the game. Masidi. High ball towards Sandilands and Marich, third man up, Conker off his chest, Pearson will soccer to his own advantage, Darley gets in the way, receives a Shepherd from Garthwaite, just releases as Pearson arrives and finds Taylor Hunt. Hunt will go long to the square, Griffith sets his feet. Was well identified, was a good kick in, Griffiths had the position, just set himself and with strength held that position to take the mark. Well, the kick by Daly, first of all, to find Hunt was superb. Hunt identified the, the mismatch at the top of the square, gave it some height, and let Big Ben Griffiths do the rest. Griffiths to put the Tigers back in front. A little bit going on as well, just off the ball, like Templeton, Taylor, Hunt just clashing on their way off the ground. Plenty of feeling in this game, as there should be a grand final. Everything's at stake. And Richmond kick the goal to put themselves. Their nose is just back in front. Plenty of feeling in this game. He's a big man, Ben Griffiths. He just plants his feet. Takes a good, strong, contested mark. And isn't he happy about that? Richmond just put their noses back in front in this seesawing affair. And Alex Rance with a nice little celebration there. Means something to Tigers all and sundry. They try and complete the Premiership double. Free kick to the captain, Sam Daly. Winning the corner here, the Tigers 3-2 to 3-1. They've soaked up Port's best. Daly, Griffiths, a push. Oh, ever so slight.
He's claiming it was in the side and not in the back. Fair case. He has to argue too, Cook. Griffiths will thump it forward. Moore, Lloyd, Clark must gather it. Waddell, a handball and hope to the outside. Viojo Rainbow wants to handball it forward for Conway, trying to get involved. Bachelor, as he has for most of the afternoon, there to neutralise anything happening. Dylan Conway being given absolutely no space at all. Said a multitude of opponents bachelor at him at the moment. Four goals, a four disposals, no goals from the former Williamstown Premiership player. Jack Bachelor's been desperate this afternoon. Attacked every contest with gusto. Lloyd came through, couldn't take it cleanly. Then Cannon's into Nahas. Let's head down to Alicia Reaver with an update on Conor Menadju. Well, I've just been watching him in the last minute or so. He was just drifting inside the forward 50, unopposed. Now, for someone who's kicked two goals this quarter, you'd hate to see the Borough lose concentration and let him snag a third. Hampson inside 50, bouncing ball. Morris tried to tap to Stengel. It spills to Moore. Important hand in there from Viojo Rainbow. Stengel still almost on the end of it. Bolton tries to spin through Clark, dispossessed. Murdoch steps through Griffiths. Mercedes goes to ground. Stengel wraps him up. They're going in ever-decreasing circles, so Murdoch just sinks the boot into it. Tries to find some territory, but Ellis gets on the end of it. Now it's the Tigers with momentum. Circling for a body blow on three-quarter time. Alice goes deep. Griffiths at the front. Cook couldn't quite... Majacek rather couldn't complete the mark. Taken by Massini. Dangerous kick, but Hooper gets on the end of it. Deport have run in their legs so late in the term. Dwyer can't get around Markov. O'Sullivan's kick touched off his boot. It was important from Lennon. Big moment there for Ben Lennon. Clark got a hand in, knocked it away from Hampson. Wolfenden to Majacek. Long ball. Again, they've got some space. Pearson, I want to take Daly on with speed. Daly putting in the big ones. Pearson will just put it out into open space. Shoulder to shoulder. Pearson and Daly. Daly goes hard. Coming the other way, Beasley. Pearson lays the big tackle. Coming in as Lyle. Pearson can't hang on. Oh, how good was those two contests? The run and the carry, the two bounces. The chase by Daly was superb. The skipper not getting him away from it. And then the tackle as well for Pearson to follow up. Brilliant football. Well, it was Franklin Hooker and Rioli and Jetta all over again. <laughs> yeah. No finish for Pearson in the end. Can Go. Port get one and get the lead back? I think Daly was going a bit quicker than Hooker, though. Conker, Lloyd, measured kick. Clark wearing Bolton. Lloyd follows up and gets through a couple. Handball's effective enough for Bolton. Now Richmond a chance to get out the back. Stengel has no player on the ground in front of him. And it's Troll, as you can see, darting forward. Handball to the outside for Menadju, who's had a massive third quarter. Tries to dance around Murdoch, forced into the kick in the end. Maya Jack oh. with a relieving mark. He won't get a possession for it, but the work by Bodie Murdoch not to get stepped was superb. Then that's AFL experience. It's a scintillating VFL grand final, and as we turn for home, it's the Tigers by two points. Richmond 6 8 44, Port Melbourne 6 6 42. Ivan Marriage has played very little game time, so if Hampson tires, they've got a fresh marriage on the bench. Final quarter of the VFL grand final. Richmond by two points. Hampson to Miles. High ball inside 50. Chol over the back, almost plucked it. Sandilands and Majacek wrap it up. You know, the players, they'd be well aware that every single contest has ramifications on the outcome of this game when the ball is in your hands and more importantly when it's not in your hands. Waddell the tap. Majacek taken to ground. Sandilands wrapped up by Chol. Lang, can he emerge with the football? Only as far as Lloyd. Tiny little things like getting the structure at setter, at, at throw-ins correctly. Little things here in defensive 50 stoppages for the borough, for Richmond, can be so important. Templeton off the hands of the contest, stolen by Markov, tries to release the handball to Moore, finds its way to Griffiths. He toe pokes in the Ellis direction, coming the other way was Pearson. And the umpire says a throw. There's good pressure again from Sam Lloyd. That's seven touches in the third term, Sam Lloyd. He started the game like a house on fire with 14. This is his 31st possession coming up this afternoon. It's a big performance. Nine clearances, 18 contested possessions, eight tackles, three inside 50s. He doesn't have a goal to his name just yet. We know that he's a goal-kicking 
machine quite often when Richmond need him the most. He's had a brilliant final series. He had 34 possessions in the elimination final, 22 and three goals in the semi, 27 and a goal on the prelim. From just inside 50 for the opening goal of the final turn for the Tigers. Richmond by eight points. And once again, they're quick out of the blocks to start a quarter. Some players seize big moments. Other players don't want the ball in their hands. And he's a guy that time and time again for Richmond has stepped up when they've needed it the most. Some players just seize big moments. Other players don't want the ball in their hands. Sam Lloyd, he does it time and time again for Richmond. He did it in their win against Collingwood in the elimination final. He's done it again here. Been nothing short of sublime in September. Manor emerges. Lennon at the back gets one hand to it. And Sandilands, who's now pushed back into defence for Port. Pointed and Ben Lennon would mention how quiet he'd been again the moment presents. The Tigers just doing the little things really well. The tackle from Lloyd set up a goal, winning the hard ball, center clearance, getting it out. Very rarely have we seen Ben Lennon given the opportunity to compete just one on one against his direct opponent. Only Jordan Lyle, the other end of the grounds, kicked more VFL goals this year. Lennon strikes. Tigers with all the momentum. Two of their most consistent performers throughout the course of this VFL season have stepped up to start this fourth and final quarter. Possessions to one in two minutes of footy for two goals. And kicking accurately to Lloyd and now Lennon extend the lead. That's goal number 45 for this VFL season for Ben Lennon. Biggest margin of the day. The underdogs, the borough, have to dig deep now. What have they got in response? Anastasio stripped of the football. O'Sullivan commits his body. It'll be interesting to see if Craig McRae does manage players' game times. It's going to be a big ask. Tough on the coach in there if he has to in this last turn. What else? Tap taken by Ballard. Great smother from Tynan who goes back, wins the football. Tries to get it to Anastasio. Dali intercepts. He can't get an effective kick. Tries again. Same result. It spills from Waddell to Tynan. It's going to be quick. Great tackle from Morris. Forces the turnover from Manor. He goes inside 50 and once again the tall timber in the back half. It's Cook to Masiti. The big crowd takes a breath. As Dwyer goes to Cracker, the run from behind comes from Sandilands. Port building from the back once again. Nahas next in the chain, pokes it down the line. It's a beautiful kick to Lyle. Lyle goes over the top. Anastasio can line up, runs around, gives it off. Conway's got to be quick and is. The Borough get one back. Critical goal, margin back to eight points. Yeah, great end-to-end -end ball movement there from the Borough using the whole width of this Eddie Head Stadium. Got the overlap run. Lyle was in that pocket for an eternity. He just needed someone to see him. Robin Nahas did. There was great run and carry out of the back half. Lyle was all alone in that pocket for an eternity. He needed someone to see him. Nahas with the experience did. And they just continue to run forward. Anastasio to Conway. Can that get his confidence up? So the forwards who've been whisper quiet, Lennon and Conway strike. And Alicia Eva, have you heard a three-quarter time speech like Gary Ayers's? It was very spirited, and I haven't felt like I could run through brick walls, and that's a tough, a tough feat. But look, the players have taken on ownership of this game. They know what they need to do. It's all about effort from here, and they were very vocal in saying that. Manager forward Griffiths pushed out of it by Cook, and Ben Griffiths is down and in a heap. Mercedes. 
kick long. Markov leaves it. Bachelor took the front spot. It's Nahas. Tumbling and kicking to the back. He was pushed. There's no advantage here for Pollock, so the ball will come back. It's left ankle for Ben Griffiths. Landed awkwardly in that last contest. Let's take another look. There it is. Rolls it. Stands. Steps, steps on the boot of Lucas Cook. Yeah. He'll be sore. So they need the Shea Bolton magic spray and tape out quickly. They need him as a peg in their forward line. Who saw you reckon, Brownie? <laughs> Dam Damien Hardwick with a... First time we've seen him pensive today and perhaps a little bit nervy with some injuries. Some of his options perhaps from a selection point of view next week. Injured Shea Bolton was an emergency last night. Well, they're He's carrying an ankle. A player down here as Griffiths takes a while to hobble off the ground. So Masidi kicks deep at the back. Waddell on the second bite, yes! Almost the only time we've seen Sean Hampson outpointed today. And the young man, Lockie Waddell, can bring the borough back within two points. He was caught at the back, held his ground, no infringement. And a big kick for the man who's held down Port's Ruckstocks today. The 21-year-old from Ashburton and the Oakley Chargers can't kick a seventh goal of the season. The chance goes begging. Margin back to seven points. Brownie, they're the little moments Gary Ayers are talking about. No doubt about that. Waddell, he's battled manfully in the ruck today. That was his opportunity. Seven-point game. Sandilands leaves his man to fly over the top of Ballard. Spills to Garthwaite under pressure from Pierce and cops it up to Dwyer. Dwyer off a step inside 50. And Eli Templeton's on the end of it. He's already kicked one big goal this afternoon. He's had a fantastic season. He came off the St Kilda list at the end of last year. And it's interesting. VFL coaches tell you, Brownie, when you get players straight out of the AFL system, some players miss a beat their first season. They're still thinking about not being on an AFL team. Others just move straight into go mode. And Eli Templeton's had a great year. Super professional. He's usually a beautiful set shot. Kick one in the second term. Not on this occasion. And again, the Borough wasted opportunity. He just poked at that. He didn't kick through the footy at all. That's a nervous kick. That's a player kicking to keep his team in a grand final. The pressure will continue to mount. The more opportunities they get, the more they miss. It's a goal of difference. Sam Daly trying to become a two-time VFL Premiership player. Sandilands overran it. And fell to Clark to troll. Marich. Ball to the outside. Tigers have the numbers. It's Lloyd. Kick to the advantage of Stengel. Body sport from Viojo Rainbow. Done a great job. And Alicia either to update us on the status of Ben Griffith's ankle. Well, boys, he's in a lot of pain down here. They're taking his boot off now, and they're going to tape it up and see how he goes. But he's had his head in, head in his hands for a little while. We hope to see him back out there. A couple of Panadine forward, I think he just took. The ankle already strapped too, so at the nine and a half minute mark, you think he's at least five minutes away from re-entering the action. Lang from Templeton, kick forward. Conway, worn closely again by Garthway. Well, they've just put the human glove on Dylan Conway today. Garth Wade has not given him an inch all afternoon. It's been so impressive, hasn't he? The 19-year-old from Coral Rutherglen. Glen. Spent some time at the GWS Academy. He's been outstanding this afternoon in his first VFL Grand Final. Clark gives it off to Temple. And look out, Morris is coming. He just got the kick away. Lyle in front position. Spills off the hands. There's Over good, and out. Really good body work there from Beasley. In particular when the ball was in the air. Just was nudging Jordan Lyle under that footy. Helped him affect the spoil. Clark jumps early against Marich who wins the football. Gets boot to it but only as far as Murdoch as Morris arrives late. Murdoch thumps it back inside 50. Conway and Lyle both there. Kane lurking at the front. It's taken by Alice. He gives it to Short. Now a chance for the Tigers to run off halfback. Penetrating kick towards Bolton against Tynan. Cook against Chol as well. Cook goes to ground. So does Tynan. Opens the door for Bolton. He goes towards his partner in crime and finds Stengel in the pocket. He's so classy. Every time he gets the ball in his hands, Something happens for the Tigers. Jordan Lyle down at the other end of the ground. 
Back up on his feet now, but trotting to the bench. Tyson Stengel was the man that took the semi-final apart for, against Casey. Kicked four goals in the first half. Another pressure moment. These are the moments that determine grand finals. Port miss a couple at the other end. Can Stengel thread the needle? Not quite. You don't see too many players go with an out-and-out drop punt in that situation. Stengel decided to hit it too skinny. Heavy landing from Lyle on the small of his back, and it's a seven-point game. Murdoch goes corner, dangerous wide, down to Murdoch! Well, Sam Lloyd's had 32 disposals today, but arguably his most important act of the day was that. He read it beautifully off the boot, brought it to ground, and Sean Manor, the 23rd man, wheeled around and make no mistake. Well, Sam Lloyd's had 32 disposals, but arguably his most important act for the game was that. He read it beautifully off the boot of Murdoch, picked it off, fell into the hands of Sean Manor, the 23rd man. The 20-year-old snaps truly 13-point margin. So once again, the Tigers out to a two-goal lead. Hunt receives the handball, throws it on the boot. Back inside 50, and once again, Meyer check stands tall. Well, they're just going to have to go here. Cook, plenty of time for the bar. Off to Viojo Rainbow. We're not even halfway through this final term. Bouncing ball taken by Ellis. To Miles. Short. Goes to ground. Gives it back to Miles. High ball inside 50. Steaming out as Hampson forces a contest. Lennon keeps it alive. Coming through Manor, ducked his head, wrapped up and gone. Outstanding umpiring, good tackle. They need to stay composed here, still play that aggressive ball movement that we've seen all day. Hook to Templeton, to Pearson, now O'Sullivan. They can't panic. He's got Nahas out wide, wide, floats the kick. He's got a runner to the outside, will draw Batchelor, then steps inside him, goes into the corridor and finds Pinwell. Pinwell wants to give it off. Nahas keeps running from 51, gives it everything, hits it off the side of his boot, and Alice comes across. Ball out of bounds. Brownie, the worrying thing now for Port Melbourne is they're clearly a higher possession team than Richmond, but the Tigers are matching them 34 to 30 for the turn. Yeah, they're starting to maintain that possession. Richmond have been highly effective going inside their forward 50 in this quarter. Seven inside 50s for three goals, one, the Tigers. Pinwall denied by Lloyd. Morris trying to muster a gallop, just going to take out the body of Cook. Taps it into the way of Cracker. Inside 50, marriage on the stretch. Clark clasped. Well, if they do lose this game today, the Borough, it's not going to be due to their effort, their want, their hardness at the contest. It's going to be their delivery inside Ford 50 time and time again. They let themselves down with the most important possession. In will Shark the Marrick tap. He went in for another dose. Clark pinballed out of it. Bodies flying everywhere. Short, the back, Menadju, so important in that third quarter. Sandilands v Stengel. Sandilands took the front spot, slipping the tackle was Mercedes. Mitch Wolfenden will burrow in. So Richmond on the verge of breaking all sorts of droughts. 20 years since an AFL Reserves Premiership. Can it be the start of a dream double? Halfway through the second, the final term. Waddell went early, but Marriage tapped it straight to O'Sullivan. He feeds it wide to Mercedes. Looks inside 50. Wants Clark, but again, in the way is Ellis. Some big possessions in this final term. That's mark number six. Alice to Miles, Menadju streams out a half back, puts it on his boot to a one on one. Lennon used the body well against Sandilands, can go inside 50. Murdoch putting in the big ones to try and get there and force a contest. He does. It's a lie for Stingle and Murdoch. Cook slips away. Needs to be tidy with the ball use, and he is. He finds O'Sullivan. That was a huge one on one defensive win there from Bodie Murdoch. Port continue to be bold. Pinball under pressure. They're running into trouble. Cook, O'Sullivan, Pinwall, back to Majacek, and they work it to Sandilands. They, no they just kept running into a wall of, of 
a wall of pressure, that frontal pressure that Richmond just bring every single week, which forced them lateral and slow. Sandilands short into the hole to find Mercedes. Here's the bold kick. It's a beauty from Mercedes. It finds Wolfenden. He's got Kane over the top. He's got O'Sullivan over the top. Goes to him now. O'Sullivan short. That's the delivery they're looking for. He finds Blake Pearson. 40 metres out directly in front. He's used the footy so well today, Tom O'Sullivan, being one of the few guys that has lowered his eyes and hit up those are the lead up targets. So Port have burnt some opportunities, some set shots in this final term. Richmond have made theirs. That's the difference in the game. Can Pearson step up from 49 metres? Margin back to seven points. The Borough hang in. 17 and a half gone, final term. the game this year, Blake Pearson. He's usually the man dishing goals off. He leads the club in score assists. He's also kicked 29 goals for the season. Been a great contributor and that was a big moment. Marich over the top. Anastasio off the back of the square will go soccer style and trickle it off the boot of umpire Andre G. In fact, no pinwall. Not enough on that handball for Nahas. He'll get a second look. Work his way through traffic to the back for Murdoch, who's normally sensible by foot. Wide the fist from Beasley on Lyle, who's back from that ankle injury. Manor against Kane, who appeals for a free kick. Manor continues to play the game. Daly, Conker. Courage in flight from Tynan, who works his way back. Mercedes and Charles see it out. Alicia Eva, an update on Ben Griffiths and that ankle. Ben Griffiths is back out on the ground. He's playing at full forward at the moment, so they've taped up that ankle again. He's looking all right at the moment. We're heading towards uh, time on in the final term. It's the Tigers by seven points. Hunt tries to slap it clear of the congestion. Lloyd to Hunt. Gets a boot on it despite the pressure from Templeton. Child will arrive late. Forces a contest against Mercedes. Lang to Mercedes. Throws it on his boot. Kane underneath it. Daly over the top with the well timed fist. And if this game is a draw after four quarters, it's the same rules apply in AFL five minutes either side. Marich locks up with Waddell. The secondary tap from Marich went to Kane. Thought about the little gift to Anastasio. Kick goes in his direction. Great desperation from Conker. Throws it on his boot. Viojo Rainbow with some body work on Stengel. Stengel hunts it at ground level. Wins that one on one. Gives it to Manor. The youngster getting involved. Ballard. Menadju wants to run. Here's a chance for the Tigers. Lloyd from 52 metres. Griffiths! A timely return to the action for Ben Griffiths. And a chance to re establish that 13 point lead. What about the four quarter performance of Sam Lloyd? He just put that on a platter for Griffiths, whose day looked done and dusted about 10 minutes ago. Now he's come back out there and can put them further in front. Into time on, final turn, and the Tigers lead by 13 points. Ben Griffiths kicks his third. And once again, the Tigers keep the borough at bay. Really important 50-50 win by Tyson Stengel in the middle of the ground on Viojo Rainbow. That allowed them to get out the front. We talk about how important some balls are. The Tyson Stengel moment in the middle of the ground, a 50-50 contest against Viojo Rainbow. He wins the ball. That allows the overlap handball to Sam Lloyd, who gives it to Griffiths. You can trace that all the way back to the contested possession from Stengel. Hunt will deny O'Sullivan. Cracker, shark the handball. Anastasio 
everything must work now for Port Anastasio. Wanted Sandlands has been moved back forward. No free kick. Beasley, Darley over the head of Conway to Garthwaite. What a superb steady game he's played in defence. Kick will skittle a couple. Richmond have the numbers. Hunt, happy to take ground but denied. And Nathan Templeton and Ivan Maric in his final game hunting a premiership medal, getting some work done. Yeah, he hasn't had a great day, Big Ivan. Hasn't played much. And you can see there he's got a cut above his right eye. It looks like they might just put a stitch in it. I know he'll be very keen to be out there when the siren goes because he is retiring after today. Quite a fitting way for him to go out with a couple of stitches on the brow. One last badge of honour for Ivan Maric. Taylor Hunt. High ball to 50. They come from all angles. Bolton stayed down, almost got the crumb, couldn't quite control it. Cook's been magnificent to Templeton. Now to Tynan. Tynan goes down the line looking for Conway, won't get that far. Pearson worried Hampson out of it. Now a chance for the Borough to break. Pearson with speed, wants an option, has Pinwell. Pinwell can go to Nahas, look out! He was lined up by Markov. That kick had to go to space. They had Cracker streaming towards the goal there, just kick it out to the man we know has some good leg speed. Hampson against Sandilands, down to Miles. Can't get the handball or the kick away. O'Sullivan slides in, Penwell tries to farm it forward, keeps it moving. Quick ball comes out in the manor direction. He's pressured out of it by Templeton, taken by Daly. High ball in the middle of the ground. Mercedes will come in from the side. They contest, it's a port ball at ground level. Lang's gotta be clean. He gets it to Murdoch. Murdoch to Meyercheck. Inside 50. Lyle arrives from the back. Couldn't take it. Conway bounces. Goal for a goal. Conway gets his second. And we're back to seven points once again. Now Dylan Conway been unsighted this afternoon. And all of a sudden he bobs up. Kicks a couple of big goals. Just to keep the borough in it. It's only fitting if this game goes down to the wire. There's been nothing between these two teams all afternoon. You get the feeling there's going to be a few more chapters yet. We've spoken a couple of times about the resilience of the Port Melbourne Football Club this afternoon, and we're seeing it right here. Well, they keep coming. They keep coming. It's the only way they know how. Dylan Conway unsighted this afternoon has kicked two big last quarter goals to keep them in it. So Kane and Conway with two apiece, and Hugh Sandlands into the ruck for the borough, giving away some serious centimetres to Hampson. Pinwell keeps it alive. Tynan bounces off one. Dwyer, volleyball by Pinwell to the advantage of Cracker. Old and young link up to Nahas. Lyle taken down, no free kick. Bachelor, cool, calm and collected. Brings in Corridor for short. Not the required 15, and he'll thump this ball forward. Child forced to fist, Mercedes into traffic. Handball for Woofenden. Every contest matters right now with a free kick. You just get the go back to Bur Brody Murdoch. You just get the feeling the borough, the way they play, will give themselves another couple of opportunities going forward. It's whether they can capitalise. It's all out attack from Port Melbourne right now. Viojo Rainbow's got some space. Good kick to Conway! It was a great kick because it was off the line. Garth White, who hasn't left his side all day, thought that that kick was coming out to the space and he cut it back in board. And Dylan Conway, could he be the hero here for the Borough, lining up for his third? He kicked three goals for Williamstown in their 2015 grand final win. Now he's with their arch rival and has a chance to kick his third and make it a one-point game. What a moment for Dylan Conway. Up he steps. And he slots it. It's a one-point game. Port Melbourne just keep on coming. They won't go away.
goal there from Dylan Conway. Goal number three. Port Melbourne, they won't go away. It's not in their DNA. They don't know how. Craig McRae, three-time Premiership player with the Brisbane Lions, trying to become a Premiership coach. And his team need to stand up in front of this borough surge. Well, O'Sullivan takes miles to the deck. Premiership medallions aren't just handed out. You've got to earn them. And both these clubs throwing everything at each other this afternoon. Only one will walk away victorious. Gary Ayres trying to become a two-time Premiership coach. He's one in three in grand finals so far at AFL and VFL level. Bolton, once again athletic. Tynan desperately trying to keep it alive. More. What a tackle from O'Sullivan on Lloyd. Murdoch goes Bunny. Creates a path for Meyer. Check to Tynan. And again, it's slingshot footy from the bar. Pinwell, Murdoch to the outside again. To Dwyer. Into the composed hands. Cues for a lead. Gets it from Nahas. It's Port's big names getting involved here. Robin Nahas, the engineer of this Port Melbourne ball movement that's taken them to the verge of a flag. The fist from Daly. Through hands. Dwyer butters up. Tries to find Cracker. Hampson, hands free. Markov. Lennon. Dances through a couple. To Short. Who normally wants to kick. Does so on this occasion. A high ball. Majacek sets himself. Bodied out of it. Ball to the back for Clark. Well, the switch was on then. Clark just threw it on the boot. Huge ball here for Adele. Spills to ground. The numbers are with Port. Pinwell steps through the bachelor tackle. Off to O'Sullivan. He's run down. Magnificent run down tackle, play on the call. Templeton from 51 metres heads goal. Bouncing ball. Pearson will get there first. Gathers under pressure from Moore. Brings it in board. Wolf of Dan! Unbelievable! The Borough with 13 points down, entering time on. Mitch Neffley lead. Wasn't even playing for them last year. He was playing in the Eastern Footy League for Knox. He came back this year, back to the borough, and he's just kicked the goal that put him in front and could win them the premiership. Lots of numbers now for Port going down back. They've only got three up forward. <laughs> what a performance. Sixth lead change. Three in a row to Port in five minutes. And now it's Richmond who need to open up the scoring floodgates. Waddell, Lang, Templeton. What a season he's had. Conway, huge in this last quarter. Garthwaite, huge all day. And the Tigers must go. Bachelor to the ring. Mark to Ellis, held up by Hooper. Sam Lloyd will try and slip forward. Ellis, normally a good kick. Bolton stretches, denied. Meyer check, Griffiths on that dodgy ankle, dribbles it forward. Waddell tackled. No free kick, Tiger fans roaring. Little kick from Lang, here's Lloyd. Joe Rainbow thumps it clear, but Richmond have set up defensively. Port need this ball out. Let's get it. It's going to be deliberate. And it's deliberate. He knew as soon as he kicked it, that's what they pay. That's what the rules been brought in for. But it isn't, doesn't care because he's got it out of the defensive 50. 30 minutes gone. Garth Wake to the 50. Moore flies over the top. It spills to Ellis. Lang's got to be quick. Just gets booked to ball. Conway wrapped up by Garth Wake. He's taken down. Oh, he's, he has had a big game today, but Dylan Conway, when they've needed him, three last quarter goals, and he knew he could not afford to let that ball out there. He took the tackle, even if he got caught holding the ball, it was the right play. Massive moment there from Conway. 30 and a half minutes. Hamps in the tap. Can the Tigers break free? Morris goes hard. Bachelor's kick taken by Lang. Nahas has got the football. They've got some space. They've got some runners moving forward. He slips away from Hanson. Wants someone to come to him. Gives it to Waddell. Waddell can go down the line and Kane can take the mark. That's what they were waiting for. Robin Nahas take a bow. He didn't want to blaze away. He was looking to get some composed possession. A mark, any mark. Kane will thump it as long and as high as he can. It's a two-on-one down back. And Moore takes the grab. Now a chance for the Tigers. Can they build from the back? They've got numbers up the middle. And it's Menadju who's the dasher. He's already kicked a couple. Takes
pass on Hooper, takes ground by foot. Mercedes hands to it, couldn't take the mark. Before Bolton's there, he gets the kick clear. Port have numbers. Bouncing footy will help for Dwyer. Markov runs him down. Dwyer wants the sanctuary of the line, gets it. And he's been and deliberate. Yep, again, it's the right call. Probably Dwyer didn't need to do it. He was under a lot of pressure. We just go on the barrels here. Markov with a padded kick. O'Sullivan has dropped it. Couldn't hang on to it. Tom O'Sullivan had 12 possessions oh. in that second quarter, and that could have been the seal of that oh, mark. He marks that, and that's almost game over. But he just couldn't quite hold on. Have a look at the bench. Can't be long left. Hampson the tap. Down to Ellis. One last chance for the Tigers. Stengel's away. He goes towards Griffiths. They've got men in the pocket. 55 out. Well, how 
proud of you of your players who just never gave up. Okay. And a little kiss from Robin Hart. <laughs> no, no, that's just guts. That's just wanting it. They're playing for each other. I, mean, I don't think it gets any better than that. We were gone three or four times. No one gave us a chance to get the foot straight against Ridley today. But we held strong. We knew, believe, we knew if we stayed strong for long enough, we could do it. We're just so proud of the boys, so proud to be part of the club. You more than anyone believe red and blue, 200 plus games. I mean, this must just mean so much to you and to see the jubilation around. It's absolutely everything. It's just, you put in so much work and you just, you just do it week in, week out for moments like this. And to share it with a couple of the older boys, I've done it with before, but even more to share it with the, the guys that haven't experienced it before. It's just, just a great feeling. Congratulations. No one deserves it more. Enjoy it. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. What a game. Port Melbourne, 11 8 74. Richmond, 10 10 70. Our thoughts go out to Ben Lennon. Couldn't win it after the siren. And the borough are the champions of Victoria. of a tight grand final. Port Melbourne have come from the death. Not for the first time this season. They trailed by 13 points entering time on in the final term. Goals to Dylan Conway at the 23 minute mark. Another at the 25 minute mark. And then Mitch Wolfenden put them in front at the 28 minute mark of the final term. There were still five agonizing, thrilling minutes to play. Ben Lennon with a chance to win it after the siren. Couldn't make the kick. And Port Melbourne are the champions of Victorian football for the 17th time. And Gary Ayres is a premiership coach for the second time. Here he is with Alicia Eva. Gary Ayres, this is incredible. How did you do it? Uh, I think just to be honest, it's the, uh, the Borough spirit that came through today. Obviously the nerve, we held our nerves. We never, ever felt we didn't have a chance coming into the game today. And... Um, Oh, it was just almost a miracle, I think. You know, the Richmond momentum, and, and we backed ourselves. We stuck fat to everything that we had to do. Uh, we played some unbelievable, desperate footy. And then just in that last quarter, we probably just got some chances going our way. Whereas I didn't think in the first three, we probably had that. And there's an element of luck, like, you know, the Tigers could have won the game on the last kick of the day. But we want to sit here and say uh, it's a wonderful game for VFL footy. And, yeah, there's winners obviously today all round, but obviously I'm glad we're the winners in the Port Melbourne Colours. There is so much emotion down here. This means so much to the club. I'll let you get back to it, but well done. And what a what a fitting end to, to the season it was for the bar. Thank you very much. Sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Gary Ayres, he's got the magic September touch. Oh, didn't he love it? And there is the jubilation on the final So after the final siren, when the kick from Ben Lennon fell short. And there's the other side of the equation. Full credit to Richmond. They were magnificent this afternoon, but just couldn't quite get over the line. As we head down to our Master of Ceremonies for the presentation of the 2017 VFL Premiership Cup, here's Nigel Carmody. Well, ladies and gentlemen, quite simply, what an amazing game of footy. How about a round of applause for Richmond and Port Melbourne for one of the best grand finals I think we've ever seen in VFA, VFL history. First of all, I'd like to invite forward Richmond captain Sam Darley to say a few words on behalf of his side. Uh, first off, uh, hats off to Port Melbourne. Phenomenal game. Uh, we gave you everything we had um, and you blokes took the points. So. Enjoy it, you deserved it. Um, as I said, cracky game and you blokes really showed us how good you are. Um, I'll be short, but to our boys, it's uh, been an incredible journey. You think about halfway through last year, did you think we'd be here together? So all I can say is that we'll stick together, stay connected and uh, bounce back next year. So thank you. Thanks, Sam. Congratulations to Richmond on a superb year in the VFL and all the best for the AFL Grand Final against Adelaide on Saturday. Since 1983, the Nongos medal has been awarded to the best player on the ground in the Peter Jackson Love the Game VFL Grand Final. And on behalf of the panel of judges, they have awarded today's 
Norm Goss medal to Sam Lloyd of the Richmond Football Club. And as Sam makes his way forward, I'd invite AFL Victoria's Ray Horsburgh to present the medal. Uh, yeah, first of all, to Port Melbourne, fantastic game, boys, and you really deserve it. You've held fat all year to Gary and Chris. You really rallied the troops. And uh, yeah, you thoroughly deserve it, so enjoy it. Um, to our boys, you know, you tried your hardest. We came from the hard way, but we did our best. And look, it's an honor to get this, but I'll trade it in for what, a medal any day. And to our supporters and the seniors, thanks for coming to support us. And yeah, everyone that had anything to do with the day, thank you. Congratulations, Sam, on an outstanding game and a wonderful season at VFL level as well. Peter Jackson has been a superb sponsor of the VFL competition for several years and I'd like to invite forward Nick Jackson representing the team at Peter Jackson's Melbourne to present medals to the 23 players and of course coach Gary Ayres from the Premiers, Port Melbourne. So I'll invite Nick forward and get things started with number three, Luke Tynan. Number four, Tom O'Sullivan. Number five, Shannon Lang. Number six, the Frosty Miller medalist, Jordan Lyle. Number seven, and now a two-time premiership player, Dylan Conway. Number 16, Dylan Viojo Rainbow. Number 18, Mitch Wolfenden. Number 19, and joining Dylan Conway as a two-time premiership player at different clubs, Anthony Anastasio. Number 20, Sam Dwyer. Number 21, Lucas Cook. Number 23, Hugh Sandilands. Number 27, Damien Massini. Number 28, Robin Nahas. Number 29, Chris Kane. Number 30, Brody Murdoch. Number 31, Brody Majacek. Number 32, Blake Pearson. Number 35, Eli Templeton.
Number 37, Harvey Hooper. Number 36, Lachlan Waddell. Number 40, Scott Clark. The 23rd man today, number 66, Ash Cracker. Port Melbourne's captain after winning the Norm Goss medal in 2011. He's now a premiership captain. Number 10, Toby Pinwall. And now a two-time premiership winning coach of the Mighty Borough, Gary Ayres. Firstly, to the Richmond boys, Sam and Fly and all the guys, I mean, it was obviously just one of the great grand finals. When it's that close, it can go either way. And lucky for us, we were uh, on the right side of the coin um, today. To my boys, I just couldn't be prouder. You know, with what happened at the start of the year and then a few moments during the year, we just never gave up. We stuck to what we know. And in that last quarter, when we were down, but we weren't out and we just chipped away and chipped away. And I couldn't be proud of the to be your captain. I'm just so happy. To all our fans, um, we, we might have been outnumbered, but we certainly weren't outvoiced. There's two things Port Melbourne do well, and that's play football and celebrate. We've got one out of the way, and we'll do the other later. To uh, Craig and the Richmond Footy Club, absolute congratulations on the back half of last year and obviously this year. It's a credit to the culture that you've obviously been able to get in the last 18 months and it was just a really, really tough game. So Craig, to you and the boys, thanks very much. To my guys here, there's a lot of hard work that goes into these particular days. The borough spirit, the persistence, the belief and how we've actually been able to turn things around in the last 12 months. It's just an absolute credit to the character of you and the support from your family and your partners. And I just can't thank you enough. It was just an unbelievable effort today, boys. So well done. <laughs> to the sponsors, thank you very much. To our wonderful band of supporters, you're as loud as loud today. We obviously always love the fact that you support us whether it's the ups or the downs, and certainly this couldn't have been achieved without your efforts, and we thanks very much for coming out to Eddie Head today. And lastly, in this time of the year, there's a lot of lessons are earned, but uh, certainly trophies are very much earned. And boys, you bloody well deserve this. Go the Borough! Thanks, Gary and Toby. The only thing left to do is to present Port Melbourne with their 17th Premiership Cup. I'll invite Paul Jackson on behalf of VFL title sponsor, Peter Jackson, to present the cup to Toby Pitwell, Gary Ayres, and the Port Melbourne Football Club. season the Port Melbourne Football Club was on the verge of extinction after 143 years they rattled the tins they kept their football club alive and seven months later 
They are VFL champions. In many ways, the ultimate underdogs, Brownie. These guys, part-time footballers against an AFL quality lineup this afternoon. They certainly are 19 AFL players for Richmond and uh, come from behind victory. This is what you play the game for. This next 10 or 20 minutes is the best of their football lives. What a grand final, one of the great VFA, VFL grand finals. And Port Melbourne prevail by four points. It's the Borough, the champions of Victoria.